Great. Um, this is the Camden Planning Board meeting for Wednesday, March 29, 2023. Um, Tonight we'll be considering a subdivision of land application. Um, before we get started, I would just like to check and see if there's any public comment on non-agenda items. Okay, I don't see any. Anyone on the board have anything? Okay, we'll cross that one off quick. Um, meetings and hearings continued from March 15, 2023. Is that where we are, Jeremy? Yeah. Yep. Um, so right now we're, we're doing a continued uh, hearing and meeting um, regarding the application for the subdivision of land. The applicant is Nordhaven Camden LLC, represented by Gartley Andorsky, who I see is here. Um, the property address is 440 Belfast Road, map 134, lot 1 in the Coastal Residential District. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn over to Jeremy real quick to do a, do you want to do your summary now or should we wait till after the, the waiver? No, I think you should uh, go ahead. Okay. Um, we are going to have, um, I've been, it's been sort of gently explained to me that we should have had a, a, a public hearing on the waiver request at the last meeting. We didn't do that, so we're going to handle that first, and then we're going to go into the rest of the process. Um, <clears throat> there were several requests for a waiver from the applicant. Um, I'll just go ahead and read from the thing here. Um, the waiver request language was originally submitted by the applicant in their pre-application packet and included again with their preliminary plan application. The process for hearing and waivers is included in Chapter 235, Article 11. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, do the waiver hearing first. So um, as far as the public hearing process, um, we'll give the... Uh, applicant an opportunity I think to speak and then the public will have an opportunity to comment then we'll go back to um, the board and the applicant any questions of the applicant and then the public will have a second uh, opportunity to comment with new information or new comments and then once that period is closed there will be no further comments on the waiver um, requests from the public and then the board will deliberate on the waiver itself um, so uh, at this point, um, we're going to look at the, there's a couple of waiver requests. I think we're only doing, is it one actual, only one, actual. one actual request? One, right? Yeah, okay. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> the process for the waiver, the waiver of design guidelines, the board may waive design guidelines of this chapter when it finds that the need for a waiver is due to unique circumstances of the property and that the circumstances are beyond the control of the developer, provided that A, any request for waivers shall be provided in writing prior to final approval. B, the developer has submitted clear and convincing documentation that the waiver requested is necessary and appropriate for the proposed subdivision. C, written statements from the appropriate town departments address the possible effects of the requested waiver on the public health, safety, and welfare. Um, we have the only uh, department head is Chief Farley um, from the fire department uh, is, is the only town department head who was asked to comment and provide, um, provide information on that and we have a letter from him. Um, D, the board provides notifies the butters and holds a public hearing on the requested waivers which is where we are right now. Um, and the copies of the public hearing notice were sent to the tenant butters by first class mail and the hearing has been advertised twice. We have five members of the board present. Looks like we have four. We have four if with John voting. Four with John voting. Um, do we have to have five present in order to do the waiver? And we don't have Pat and we don't know about Mark. You just table this until we find out what Mark, if Mark is coming or not. Yeah. But this is... This is from the statute. Yeah. Um, unanticipated hiccup there, guys. Sorry. Um, yeah, so I'm going to table this uh, waiver request. Hopefully Mark will show up. Um, if not, we will have to hold a separate public hearing on the waiver itself. Yeah, she was not. She's not able. Okay. Um, 
So therefore, we're going to table to well, later later in this meeting. Hopefully, later in the meeting, and if uh, not, then <clears throat> we just need to revisit. Yeah, Jeremy is trying to get a hold of somebody. Um, yeah. All right. Sorry about that. That's a, a quick review of the waiver procedure that we will not be going over right now. For the waiver request itself, the, the public comment will be tabled. Right. Unless Can you just hold on one second? We're trying to get the YouTube operational. There's an issue. Oh, it's not working? No. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. Sorry about this, everybody. We have a challenging um, audio video system. We do. We do. Yep. And we have all those fans out there who. Well, it was being it is being record it was being recorded, so we can put that back up onto YouTube. But and it was not no live. One, um, yeah. yeah, no one's. You could just do it I'm not sure how to do that, Allison. I know um, Shenley's trying to work on it right now. We're here now. Yeah. Yeah. We're just moving on to the plan review. Plan review. Plan review. All of that. And review of submission. Plan plan is sufficiently complete, too. And then we can hold the public hearing. For the rest of it. For the submission. Mm -hmm. That <clears throat> and we're not approving the we're not approving the package tonight anyway. So the waiver is like they're coming back to us anyway. Okay, so we're we're just doing preliminary plan and find right. complete. Yeah. The firewall wouldn't be an issue. This is preliminary plan review. Yeah. And Then we have to go through all the standards. In the preliminary? That's what I'm not sure. That's I what I can't so. figure just out. To make, just to find it complete. Complete. Uh, complete. That's, I think so too, because Jeannie would have put more in here. <laughs>
All right, we're just going to go. Shenley, I think we're good there. Okay. This will just. All right, so this is going. Um, what will be recorded and posted tomorrow will likely be what's being recorded down below on the system, not what's here, but I will see. Right. See if this we should just. I have not seen all right, so this is going. All right, go ahead. Sorry. No, it's fine. Uh, thanks for your work on that. Um, so, as, as indicated, we're going to uh, table the, the um, waiver discussion and move right on to the preliminary plan review. Um, and so, this opportunity, this is the opportunity, I think, Jeremy, if you have a quick introduction of the project. Um, I could do a very quick one. Yeah, um, quick this is uh, the applicant go yeah, ahead. I think it's probably more um, appropriate. They do it, but um, yeah. So this is a proposal by Nord Haven. Um, they're proposing a, a ten-unit subdivision that includes the existing um, residential unit on the property, so nine new buildings um, at on Belfast Road. Um, Gartley and Dorsky is the applicant. This is an open space subdivision in our coastal residential zone. Um, I think I'll leave it at that. This is, again, the preliminary meeting. We had a pre-application meeting, I don't know, like two months ago now. Yep. And then we did a site walk. Um, I think all the board members were there at that site walk. Uh, maybe Mark Murray wasn't. I don't remember now. Um, and we had a couple people from the public there. Um, and then we, again, like you said earlier, we had to table this to, to continue it to today. Um, and that's what we have before us. So again, it's the pre our preliminary um, approval meeting, and we'll go from there. Sounds good. Sound good. Yep. So now is the opportunity for the applicant to introduce their plan, and uh, <clears throat> we'll move from there. All right. Thank you, Ethan. I'm Will Gartley with Gartley and Dorsky Engineering and Surveying, and uh, Andrew Hedrick is with me tonight, and we're here representing Rob Brown and Ed Hansen of uh, Nordhaven Camden LLC for a 10 dwelling unit subdivision on a 43.33 acre parcel on Springbrook Hill in Camden. The project um, includes on-site septic, um, on-site well, underground power from Route 1. We're in open space zoning, so we've provided 33% um, of the total parcel acreage as open space. Um, and we've coordinated that with IFNW to provide the area that they thought um, was most adequate to uh, continue to provide deer wintering on the parcel. Uh, most of that's to the west of Springbrook, and then there's a piece that heads north up along the state park boundary. Included in the um, open space zoning is a section that talks about um, that if it's dwelling units that the development, or it says the dwelling units can't occupy or encompass more than an acre and a half of land per unit. It's not 100% clear to me what that means um, by encompass or occupy, but we provided a sketch that um, we labeled SK2 that shows basically the entire area that this, these 10 units are using for road septic, stormwater management, um, wells, the buildings themselves, parking. I think we were pretty conservative in encompassing everything that could be considered part of this development. Um, and that total acreage is 10 acres. Um, what the ordinance says is that we can't occupy more than one and a half per unit, which would be 15 acres. So we're well under that section as we've interpreted it. Um, we did sit down with uh, Jeremy and Chenley and, and discuss what that meant and tried to come to a, 
a common sense agreement on what, what we should show. Um, some of the changes from the pre-app are that um, unit D2 was moved from the road section that we actually are requesting a waiver from. That's about a 350 foot section of road that's um, named Fost, is it Fossil? Fost, Fostdale. Fostdale, sorry. And um, that section had three units on it previously and now it only has two, so that road that we're requesting be allowed to be 12 feet um, with two foot shoulders opposed to 18 now is really just a drive for two units. Um, then, what's that? Get right there, Jeremy. I want you to do it. Next one. Next one? Yep. Right there, 94. There we go. Ah, perfect. I've got a little. So, right here, um, there were three units here, and whoops. <laughs> Did I? Did I mess up well? I think you just zoomed down the sheet when you. Right. Yeah, there we go. Okay, there we go. And so the, that other unit was just moved over to this side. Um, and then we um, also added a landscape buffer um, along the Travis boundary line right here where the septic system is. And there's a tennis court on, on that property right here. So this will provide a good buffer for both sides. Um, we also added a carport for units D1 and D2 that right here was on this side of the road and closer to that corner, so we flipped it to this side. Um, we added the topo that was requested on the western side of Springbrook to give the planning board an idea of what, what was happening over there with regards to topography. And then obviously we've added uh, more detail on the open space and provided the uh, exact acreage. Um, we've got, we're required to have 14.29 acres, which is 33% of the 43.33. And um, what we're showing on the plan, it's labeled as open space. It's also going to be, and it is included in the condo docs, and we'll re record it on the subdivision plan of 14.4 acres. We've um, applied for and received an uh, entrance permit from Maine DOT and a stormwater uh, permit by rule from Maine DEP. We've been coordinating with uh, Chris Baldwin, PE from uh, Cumberland County Soil Conservation District. He's been reviewing all the stormwater measures. Um, he, we've had a, a good back and forth with him. Um, a lot of what he's asked for was just some additional calculations that we had done but hadn't provided, um, and some more construction detail on a lot of the stormwater measures. Mm -hmm. So we've been sending him stuff. Our last email today was uh, just a couple more small items that we've agreed to give him, and then he uh, said he'd be sending a letter of basically that he's found it adequate and complete and in compliance with the town's ordinances. Okay. So we should have that very shortly. Um, and then as uh, you mentioned before, Ethan, you've got the sign off from Chief Farley. I sat down with him and went through our fire storage um, water supplies. We're providing a 14,000 gallon underground uh, concrete tank system, cistern, that has a dry hydrant that comes up out of it and it's adjacent to the turnout that we provided so that they have uh, access to water. Um, we went over the turnaround locations and the size and dimensions of those and also the uh, road waiver uh, that we requested. I wanted, um, in fact, I sent him some more detail today just to make sure he was completely uh, understanding of the width of the road, the length of the turnarounds and the driveway, and uh, the number of units that were on that section of road. So that's kind of a brief yep. overview, and we're certainly here and ready to answer questions as you go through the requirements. Yep. Does anybody have any initial questions of the applicant? Yeah, Ed and uh, Rob would like one to just quickly show um, what the aesthetic of these buildings are going to look like. Sure. It's always awkward to have to turn around. But... <clears throat> what is on that? Oh, yeah, okay. Great. We can advance that, Jeremy. Yes, sir. So hi, it's Robert Brown uh, with Nordhaven Camden. Ed and I will 
probably tag team the presentation, but we wanted to show you a couple of slides to kind of bring the project to life a little bit more than uh, the schematics on, uh, on a site plan, which often I'm sure in these situations they can, it can get lost in the engineering detail. Yep. So we're going to talk a little bit about the, um, the lifestyle approach for, uh, for the project, the design concepts, um, landscaping amenities, our uh, approach to uh, environmental and sustainability issues, and then uh, our approach to incorporating the community that we hope to build there, how we hope to build it, uh, and how it uh, integrates, I think, with, nicely with the broader Camden community. So if you uh, advance along. So the, the approach to, uh, to this project is really an inspiration of, of the natural setting that it's, um, that it's located in, and a real passion for design. So. Um, what we're building, we think, is a, a unique way for homeowners to experience the wild of the main coast um, and still and benefit from its nearby location to what most people describe as one of Maine's most scenic seaside villages. Um, and it's really a modern interpretation of Maine's camp culture, but with a Scandinavian spin. Um, so we, uh, you know, we think it will appeal to an upscale vacation homeowner who is really interested in the uh, remote getaway uh, in the woods idea of a main style camp but really values the comforts luxury and design of more of an upscale uh, setting and so that's the the, the mix that we're trying to uh, pull together blend together uh, in this project so jeremy if you just flip um, so the images on this page are representative of the cabin designs that uh, that we uh, hope to build uh, at 440 Belfast. Um, they are uh, designs that were developed by a company located in Helsinki, Finland, who we have sponsored, uh, uh, partnered with, uh, in the design of our interpretation of their uh, authentic Scandinavian cabin. And I say our interpretation, it's, you know, we've modified their original designs a little bit to appeal to a more American aesthetic. So bigger bathrooms, um, slightly bigger uh, open spaces. Uh, than, than what they may have designed originally for these for these cabins, but they are made from sustainably harvested uh, Nordic spruce, and they are prefabricated in Finland and shipped to the United States here, where we'll bring them to site and uh, and assemble them, and then build the interiors in a more of a stick built, traditional stick built kind of kind of format. Um, so uh, we're showing three different styles here, uh, ultimately. Um, we're focused on the, the, the two on the, on the left side. Um, the one in the top left is a, uh, a two-bedroom, two-level, with the second level being a lofted uh, floor uh, with big open space behind that wall and window. And then the one in the bottom left is for a mono-pitched roof, uh, again, featuring a big glazed uh, window. And, and obviously, these can focus nicely on, uh, on sight lines and the, and the views that are afforded uh, at the property. So, Jeremy, if you uh, flip forward. Um, the, uh, the design philosophy is to try to bring the outside in to these cabins. So, you can imagine with these giant walls of, of uh, windows, you really have the opportunity for the natural setting to uh, be part of the interior living space. And that's, that's what we're trying to go for. Uh, in these. The um, interior designs are intentionally Scandinavian inspired, so uh, very simple, not a lot of detail. Uh, modern uh, curated furniture packages will be offered to, uh, to, to homeowners as part of the, uh, the approach to, uh, to the project. Um, the uh, uh, use of materials and selection of materials are intended to create warmth on the inside. When you'll notice the, uh, you know, the darker wood wide panel uh, uh, by planked floors and um, a, a nice modern fireplace in the, in the corner. So a classic look for what we're going for. So Jeremy, if you advance, the next slide is just to give you another set of visuals of the types of, uh, of interior finishes that, um, that we're looking to achieve. Yeah, and we're mostly concerned with just the exterior and then you know the, the, the location and the landscape. So um, yeah. So just, so land could segue to landscape. So this is an example of the mono pitch roof uh, style home that we expect to, to locate at the top of the meadow. 
that faces the uh, Penobscot Bay and the islands, and uh, our focus on naturalized landscapes. So this gives you a sense for the rewilding of the meadow with wildflowers uh, that will be crossed by pathways that take, uh, take residents to a uh, gathering space in the lower meadow and into the, uh, into the open space in the woods. So if you flip forward. And in the forested part of the, uh, of the property, this is the type of setting that we're looking for for the, uh, for the cabins. So landscaping, again, will be focused on restoration of the forest floor that gets disturbed in the construction process to recreate the uh, pine needles, the moss, the ferns all around the, uh, the homes. So it's a landscaping approach that only uses native species for any planting that, that we do. We've engaged songscape gardens out of Bar Harbor to uh, advise us and do the design work for this. But it gives you a feel for, um, for the natural look that we're, that we're going for. So no lawns, no foundation shrubs. Mm -hmm. No picket fences, that, that kind of thing. It's cabins in the woods. Yep, yep. Uh, amenities. You know, are focused on gathering spaces for, for residents. So this is a concept drawing of an amenity that would be in the field uh, in the front part of the property. So the, the home that we were looking at just a minute ago would be at the top of the meadow. This would be further, further down the, the meadow. And uh, Is that B1? B1 is the home, yes. Yes, yep. B1. Yep. And so, so the idea here is again to rewild wildflowers in the, in the meadow, paths cut through to the, to the gathering space. This one happens to be oriented around a fire pit, uh, but it would, with seating, with retaining walls and uh, other, other wall type structures that can take advantage of the views of the bay and the islands. If you want to flip forward. Other, another key amenity for the, uh, for the property is what we call adventure spas. So these are Outdoor spas located, uh, well, an outdoor spa located in a remote section of the, of the property. I think when we walked, we described uh, where this would be near the, uh, the, the main, main part of the waterfall. So a platformed area built around existing trees, a prefabricated uh, sauna, which is clad in metal and has one entirely glazed uh, wall, and then a main cedar hot tub set in the edge of the, uh, of the deck area. Um, our approach to and, and commitment to environmental stewardship is part of the equation for, for the project. Hopefully you're, you notice that we're focused on small footprint homes, naturalized landscapes, and cluster approach to, uh, to development to uh, preserve as much as possible of the natural setting that, uh, that, that we hope to uh, uh, build in, and that involves uh, a, a permanent preservation of a third of the uh, of the property as open space, but there'll be a lot more open space than, than uh, just that, just the way uh, the way we've been des uh, designing it. The homes themselves are manufactured of uh, sustainably harvested cross laminated uh, cross laminated timber. We're using high efficiency energy systems, triple glazed windows. Everything, uh, every decision that we try to make in the uh, in the process is tilted towards an environmentally friendly uh, approach to whatever the, uh, the that process is. And you know, another example would be uh, high-speed chargers will be located in all the carports just to enable residents to take advantage of charging for electric vehicles. And you know, the connection to the community, we're really making a uh, very uh, concerted effort to engage with all of the service providers that we need in the local community to create opportunities for businesses in the community. So architects, engineering, surveying, uh, interior design, lighting design, uh, builder, all uh, local um, businesses in the, uh, in the greater Camden area. And we hope to continue that uh, as we develop the uh, community at, at the uh, site uh, with homeowners and continue to uh, develop relationships and create opportunities for local businesses by curating activities and, uh, and other connections for residents uh, at, the, at the project with uh, local businesses. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anything from the board on that one? 
I have a couple questions. Um, one is what? How are you heating these? Are they are they year round? Are they summertime? Year round capable. Year round capable. So how are they being heated? Heat pumps. Okay, so it's electrical. Yeah, electric. No. Okay. Um, we do have a, a fireplace, which optionally by the buyer could be a gas powered fireplace or a wood so fireplace. That's a supplemental. You, the, the reason I ask that question is um, how often are big propane or gas or um, oil trucks going to be coming up the road? We're, we're, we'll have some amount of, of propane powered fireplaces that need to be filled, but it's, um, it's a relatively modest use. We're not heating the units or running stoves or, or dryers or gas. Or, no, no oil trucks. No oil can I just add that they do have to comply with the state's um, energy code as well, yeah. obviously. So, anything else um. at this time? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Um, this is the time where we will um, now go through the requirements of submission, um, determine whether or not the application is complete. Um, so that requires a review of the submissions in total. Um, just to clarify for all present, this really is the preliminary uh, plan submission requirements. There will be a further hearing um, for final submission. And so that's probably when we'll tackle the waiver as well because we don't have the requisite five members of the board. Um, so. Um, going through the list, we've got a pretty good list here of what's required. So we need um, for the application completeness, um, nine copies of the application and supporting documents. We've received that. Those have been received and distributed. Um, a copy of the most recently recorded deed for the parcel. I noticed that was in, the, was packet. in the packet. Yep. Um, just a quick question on the... Okay, and then C, all existing deed restrictions, rights of ways and other encumbrances, yes. Um, did we, uh, did I, I didn't see anywhere the proposed deed restrictions as far as the preserving of the open space. Is that somewhere in the packet already? Did I miss that? It is. It's in the covenant for it. Or it's it will in. be updated into the covenants. Okay. Um, so there's also a note on the subdivision plan that's um, verbatim as required by the ordinance. Okay. The open space that says uh, common open space shall not be further uh, divided or used for future building lots. Okay. Thank you. It's on the C1 sheet and the subdivision plan. So that I did say something about that. It's in the it's in the the. Uh, yeah, that's where I am right now. So I'm just looking for the number. Oh, yeah, common open space. Got you there. Okay. And, Ethan, we will have the town attorney review all, all those legal documents as well prior to final approval. Appreciate that. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Hi, Mark. We can. You were, you were much desired since we, um, we needed five to go over the waiver requirements and we had just four. So good to see you. And thanks for coming. I came home from a month on the road to a cold house. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> Understood. Um, we're just right now going through the, um, uh, the Appendix C, which is the... Um, the plan submission requirements. I don't know if you what you have there. Are you working digitally? I would assume you don't have a paper packet. Are you talking to Jim? I, I was talking directly to Mark. Oh, I, was on the, I am working digitally. Yes. Yeah. So we're looking at the Appendix C, which is uh, um, major subdivision preliminary plan submission requirements. 
Um, we're going to go ahead and, I think, complete that review before we go to the waiver since we're already, ha already yep. moving on it. Um, so we're, we found number, letter D was in the, in the, in the condominium documents. Um, so then E is a written statement from the Camden Wastewater Superintendent that the district has the capacity to collect and treat the wastewater or F subsurface wastewater test pit analyses prepared by a licensed site evaluator. And where are we on the stormwater? We have well, wastewater is wastewater, sorry. And we had that. Yep. Wastewater is all set. Um, a written statement from the water company that there's adequate supply and pressure for the subdivision and a statement approving the design of any extension of the water main. Well, it's not applicable to the town water, but we have the right. document from uh, Haskell's well drilling. Yep, good. Um, a written statement from the fire chief that the water supply needs for fire protection have been adequately met and approving the location of any fire hydrants. I know there's a letter from the chief. A letter from the chief about the road. Yeah, I don't know and if the it's... other one. On... There's one March 24. Yeah, the, in the... Yep. Okay. We're just whipping through these. Everything there. Um... Waste water, when the water supply is private wells, evidence of adequate groundwater supply, and that's with the, the well driller, Haskell's. Right. Yep, got that. Um, a written statement from the director of Midcoast Solid Waste Facility, the proposed subdivision will not cause an unreasonable burden on the municipality's ability to dispose of solid waste. We had that. We got that in the packet. Uh, agreements or other documents showing the manner in which open spaces are to be retained by the developer or lot owners are to be maintained. We've just discussed that earlier as well, but that's in there. Um, if open space or other land is to be offered to the municipality, not applicable. Uh, vehicular trip generation rate. If, that's in the DOT. Seeing. Yeah, we have that from DOT, I think. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. On January 9th, 2023. Yep. Uh, traffic impact analysis, also. Yeah. Yep. Uh, left lane study analysis for multifamily or non-residential, not required. <clears throat> the subdivision of condominium or cluster development, evidence at all requirements relative to establishment of a homeowners association or condominium owners association have been met, including bylaws and that all other requirements of Chapter 290 zoning pertaining to cluster development have been met. Homeowners Association or Condominium documents shall clearly state that the Association of Condominiums shall properly maintain private roadways serving the subdivision after the developer has legally relinquished that responsibility and until such time as the town may accept them as public roads. And that is definitely up in there. there with the, the covenants and yeah, the all bylaws that. and all that. Okay. So I think that's the, the application portion, finding that complete. So we have a motion on that. Make a motion that the submissions have been, or so that the plan is sufficiently complete to go to public hearing. Okay. I'll second. And a second. I have a comment or question that sure. that Appendix C also includes the location map and preliminary plan and street design plans. Yeah, I was going to go through those individually, but we could do a motion each for each or do it all. Um, do you want to just go keep going through it and then do it as yeah, one I'd big say motion? Yeah, we do one probably. whole motion for sure. the whole thing. Okay, yeah. that's fine with me. Um, so going on to number two, the location map. The location map shall be drawn at a scale not more than one inch equals 400 feet. Show the proposed subdivision in relation to the general surrounding area. The map shall show all areas within 1,000 feet of any property line. The proposed subdivision including existing subdivisions. Uh, location and names of existing streets, zoning boundaries and designations, and outline of the proposed subdivision and owner's remaining contiguous land. Uh, we have those maps. We sure. do have the maps. Uh, number three is a preliminary plan. Preliminary plan. Um, nine copies of an accurate scale map of the parcel, not more than one inch equals 50 feet, containing all the information from the site inventory map. 
the following requirements may be shown on multiple sheets when necessary. Um, I'm not going to go and read each one of these. Um, actually, I guess I will. Um, a standard boundary survey with bearings and distances showing the entire parcel and all contiguous land in common ownership of the last five years per Title 30A MRSA Section 4401. We've got the boundary survey. We've got those, yeah. Yeah. Um, name and record of owners, name of record owners for all abutting properties, check. Shown. Contour lines at the interval specified by the board showing elevations in relation to mean sea level. And we did get yeah, the, those. Those have been adjusted, yeah. yeah. We got the additional topo lines. Uh, stormwater plan showing ditches, culverts, detention, and retention areas. Um, yep. So, so we do have a plan. Are we, where are we at in the plan discussion, Jeremy? I mean, the applicant did mention a little bit of back and forth, but we were going to have a separate person review. Is that? Yeah, that's that's who they're talking about. Chris Baldwin from Cumberland yeah. County Soil and Water Conservation District. We're just going back and forth for some final stuff with Chris and. And I think Will mentioned it earlier. Um, he's for the most part satisfied with everything. It's really some construction details, as I understand, that need to be uh, just tweaked a little bit. Um, and we did get a follow-up email from Chris today, and a follow-up one from Andrew. You guys have been provided that stuff. Yep. Um, so I'm confident we're good moving forward okay. on that regard. But that and they did get a stormwater permit permit by rule from the DEP right. as well. Right, that I know. Yeah, but yep. so we just need to have that finished up before we can do the final approval. Yeah, and we'll also, just so you know, we'll have a stormwater maintenance agreement too as part of the package as well. Got it. Yep. Okay. So that's a check. Uh, boundary and designation of zoning districts, yes. Yep. Existing streets abutting the subdivision, yes. Boundary of any flood hazard area and the 100-year flood elevation, uh, as depicted by municipalities flood insurance rate map. Yep. Yep, we got that one. Can I just add really quick about the stormwater one yep. one thing? Um, those are challenging sometimes stormwater maintenance and we are going to, um, I think I'm going to make a recommendation that um, it be included on the actual subdivision plan um, so that's in enforceable by the town mm -hmm. should the, you know, the homeowners association not maintain um, stormwater. the stormwater infrastructure yep. so that we have some uh, good teeth that we can make sure that it's maintained um, forever. Okay. Um, Is that something we need to put as a condition uh, down the well, road? Well, yeah, yeah, I think that's something we should do. Yep. Okay. Likely that will include a requirement to do like a five-year recertification or something that they provide something to us that it's actually been done every five years. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, areas adjacent within or adjacent to the proposed subdivision, which has been identified as high or moderate value wildlife habitat by the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries or Wildlife or within the comprehensive plan. If any portion of the subdivision is located within an area designated as critical natural area by the comprehensive plan or the Maine Natural Areas Program, the plan shall indicate appropriate measures for the preservation of the values that qualify the site for such designation. We had a few discussions on this last time around in the preliminary meeting. Um, but we have the letter from the biologist and, yep. it's, and it's marked on that. And I'm sure that'll be something that will come up in the public hearing aspect when we go over this. Um, but we had a site walk out there and um, there's been some uh, discussion around um, preserving the land that is designated more Per the, per the state's biologist, the, the more critical habitat towards the park and the, 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 was it an acre or so of concern sort of in the front, not necessarily, on his uh, opinion, not necessarily critical. Um, so we at least have your, your application and submission on that. Um, so when sewage disposal is to be accomplished by subsurface wastewater disposal systems, location of all test pits on the site, and we've seen those. Yeah. All that. indicated. Um, location of any open space be preserved and a description of proposed improvements in its management, and we've seen that. Yep. All parcels of land proposed to be dedicated to public use in the conditions of such dedication. That is NA. Um, provision for controlling erosion and sedimentation, including measures to capture sediment during construction and measures to stabilize the soil. Um, we definitely have provisions submitted. Yeah. Um, 
that may be another issue that we want to just make sure, double check on. Um, location of, and method of disposal for land clearing and construction debris. That's kind of in the same as the last, I feel. It's, it's, yep. it's addressed in the, in the application. Right. Okay. And location and name and widths of existing streets, we have that. Okay, and then we're down to number four, the street design plans, detailed construction drawings, showing a plan view, profile, and typical cross-section of proposed street. The plan shall, view shall be at a scale no more than one inch equals 50 feet. Yeah, we got those. Got that. Okay. The vertical scale of the profile shall be one inch equals no more than 50 feet. The plan shall include the following information. I'm going to go through, we've seen all of this with, with the plan. Um, and we can address that as we get to it. Um, finally, additional information. The planning board may require additional information when it's determined necessary to meet the criteria of the state subdivision statute, Title 30A, MRSA, Section 4401, including high intensity soil survey by a registered soil scientist, hydrogeologic assessment for a subdivision not served by a sewer if any part of the subdivision is over a sand and gravel aquifer, Hydrogeologic assessment if the average density is more than one dwelling unit per 100,000 square feet. Hydrogeologic assessment the board determines potential adverse impacts on groundwater quality. And so far we have not asked for any of those. Correct. Correct. Okay. Now we can entertain a motion. Make a motion that the application is complete. A second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, Mark? It's an aye or nay. Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. John? I have a comment and then a vote. Okay. Um, I take comfort that the town attorney is going to review the covenants and restrictions because I'm not an expert yeah. in that regard. And I take comfort in the, the other, I'll call it expert review of the stormwater right. management plans that, right. that we've had other staff members take a look at. So um, I enjoyed looking at it all, and yes. Okay, thank you. Crystal? I, I vote aye that the application is complete. Thank you. And I have Crystal? a question before okay. I vote, and that is with the covenants, will we have an opportunity to question some of the things in the covenant? All, all we're doing right now is saying that yes, the yep. application is there. Yeah, in we, full. we will be going through each of these things. No, then we go into the application. Yeah. 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 And so that's an eye from me. Mm -hmm. And it's an eye from me. Motion carries. <clears throat> all right. Um, so at this time, back the waiver. we're going to go revisit what we tried to start with, which was the waiver requirement or the waiver hearing okay. request. So um, the request here for the waiver is um, to have a narrower than standard road, if I understand it correctly, um, from 18 feet down to 12 feet. And in one section. In one section um, and that's the one that services, as you indicated, um, is it basically Fosdale Lane on the map? Yes. Yep, and so. The lower portion of Fosdale Lane, after, we, after you go past the parking area. Yep, yep, and. Uh, Two units. Two units are served by that narrower road, and we have a um, letter <clears throat> from Chief Farley. The concern being, of course, that make sure that emergency vehicles could access the um, access the property there. And I'm just shuffling through with all these papers for. Okay, here I have Chris Farley's letter, so I'm going to go ahead and just read it into the record. Um, it lists all of the things, and he just wrote on the bottom, based on the meeting today with Will Gartley, the plan submitted by Gartley Dorsky dated 03-22-2023. We approve uh, the information provided for vehicle access and the cistern for, uh, cistern for water supply. So that's the chief's uh, take on that well, part Actually, of I think what you're wanting is the... Do I get the document wrong one? from the that's relevant to the waiver where he says approve the waiver based on map dated 328 for segment identified Fosdale Lane. Okay. 
I got the wrong packet right in front well, it's, of me. It's, he has two. Yep. He's got two documents to us, one about the waiver and one about the right. subdivision as a whole. Right. Great. And Thank you. Okay. So at this point, um, we, I, I guess I will um, offer the applicant just, I know we all pretty much understand it, but I'll give you an opportunity to explain what you're requesting, um, and then we'll open it for public hearing. Turn the mic on. So that's a, about a 350-foot section of drive that accesses two units. There's an existing woods road at that location, and we're trying to place this road uh, on that. And really the request comes down to just minimizing the impact um, of that area and reducing the area that, that has to be graded and cleared in order to build the road for those two units. Um, we do have uh, parking at the end and a space for turning around, um, but allowing us to keep the road at 12 feet with two foot shoulders, so you still have really a total of 16. Um, opposed to 18 and two foot shoulders, which is uh, 22, um, just allows us to minimize the impact to that area. Again, because it's only to two units. If it was a road that was going to potentially be continued, I think it would be a different story. But this is this will be the end. That road won't go any further. Yeah. So no no further plans at all to to extend that road. No. Yep. No. And that's that existing Woods Road is will become the path that takes you out into some of the open space and also to the sauna hot tub area. Right. And there's never never any plan to allow any vehicular traffic down that no. that, that far. I, I think there's a note on the plan too that uh, there will be a, a posting there. There's no something vehicular. about boulder like uh, no vehicle access beyond the point out. sign of, of some sort and then we, we show a couple of boulders at the end of that. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Well Let's go into the got all my documents floating around here. Uh, that's the waiver one I was looking for. And I'm looking for the public hearing uh, process. I think that's it there. Oh, your you need Yeah, to I have a little process. shindig that I get to read first. I got this one here. Yeah, so the process yeah. of public hearing. Um, so here's the procedure for public hearing. I did kind of uh, skip over it or, or summarize it before, but we had uh, Jeremy introduce. We had the applicant introduce. Um, then the board will see comments from a member of the public who wish to speak or ask questions. Questions and comments will not be taken from the floor so that all comments can be heard by those in attendance as well as those watching the broadcast or live stream of the meeting. Speakers must come forward to the microphone and identify themselves for the record by name and address. Um, all comments and questions of the applicant must be directed through the chair. The chair may exclude irrelevant or unduly repetitious comments. Then the first public comment period will close. Members of the board will be given an opportunity to ask questions of the applicant and or the public. Second public comment will be open for the purpose of hearing new and relevant information only. The second public comment period will then close, and if members have no further questions or comments, the public hearing will be closed. The board will then begin deliberation. There will be no further comment from the applicant or the public. A board member may ask for clarification, but it is not appropriate for the public to interject during the board deliberation phase of the review. So at this point, we've gone through the set first uh, three steps, and so now we're really ready for if there's anybody in the public who wants to comment specifically to the waiver issue. Yep, sir? Okay. Anyone? Okay, come on up. Just a little button on there you press to make it green. Um, my name is Chris Nolan. I'm a Camden resident. And I live really close to where this uh, property is uh, looking to be developed. Um, <clears throat> the question I have has to do with the uh, waiver piece th uh, that refers to where the road is looking to be um, 65 feet uh, to the river as compared to the 75 feet. Um, as someone who has uh, you know, been up in that area and also with interest because of the properties near it, um, I do have a concern that and a question about how can you know the viability of that given the steepness of the land <clears throat> next to the 
next to the river. I'm not an engineer, and nor do I uh, intend to be one, but just by general observation in looking at how uh, that road is, um, and I know that the road is very soft as well. I know they're you know, just maintenance vehicles or whatever, but it is certainly very soft, especially in the spring. Um, and the river runs pretty, pretty hard in the spring as well, and there is already some uh, erosion on that area. Uh, and that would be, <clears throat> again, where the road is looking to go to be um, 64 feet as compared with 75 feet away from the river. That part of the waiver is what I'm questioning at this point. For the for Mr. Nolan, anyone? Okay, you may you may sit down. I, I could, know we discussed this. I, I could comment on that yeah, a little bit. Yeah, um, I'd like to hear a little. Um, I don't see it in the actual portion right. of the waiver that we're discussing. The waiver is actually just about the width. Right. Correct. Not the setback. Right. Correct. And we talked about this at the pre-application meeting. Um, the existing Woods Road. Um, is not being um the location is where it is right it's been there um and this is the area we're talking about right about from right about from there to there mm -hmm. right pretty much right in front of the um this carport or whatever that is and then the, this structure um yeah that's not a waiver that the planning board uh, reviews um that is a determination that's made by the code and planning office and we okayed them to use this existing footprint of this existing woods road um you know as a much less impactful to the environment um to um, utilize that existing woods road um for their road um and that's an allowed we can do it it's an ex again existing wood road woods road um and they're having a less impact um, on the on the environment um, rather than doing having to you know go further north um, likely they get into blasting uh, it would be a much bigger impact um, but that is not a waiver re um, standard that the board does that's the code and planning office and that's how that happened we did talk about it a little bit at the last at the pre-application yeah, meeting part of the document. yeah and again we're talking this stretch right right here to there, yep. about and, 64 yeah. feet or so. And just if I may, if I'm walking the site, um, as much as I don't want to see anything disturbed or even anything close to the brook, uh, there's almost no reasonable interpretation that would say that we should move it further away and blast into the into the cliff, which they're certainly, you know, they're certainly entitled to do. But this is a, a woods road that's pretty substantial. Um, I'm sure it's soft. Um, there's obviously going to be some work done on that road. It's not just going to be like start driving cars on it. Um, but it, but it, you know, from my take on it, it just it, it did seem to be the, the smartest and, and least impactful option. And I, I would add that um, at the pre-application meeting, um, Allison McKellar um, talked about the brook and about brook drought. Um, I did meet with, um, and I was asked by the board and I volunteered to meet with um, the Trout Unlimited. Um, we met with them, went over the plan with them. Um, they're very familiar with this this brook. Um, and uh, again, we went over it with them, Shenley and I did, and they had no issues um, with that. They weren't concerned. Obviously, they're very concerned about water quality, um, but we talked about this whole area. Nothing's being done in this area, and they're preserving, you know, a significant area along the brook. Um, so they were okay with it. Um, just throwing that out there as well. I have a quick question regarding sure. that. Yep. Um, what about during construction? I mean, I, I, I don't see any problem with it after the fact that but during construction um, as we know um, construction vehicles can often be very crude in the way they um, you know they, they get things done uh, is there a possible um, precaution that can be taken or how how will that be handled because usually there's an area of of non-construction or or you know that's like some some a good deal of that I think is covered in some of the stormwater yeah discussion and there's even some stuff about construction and here's and the stormwater. here's the sediment um, barrier that they're proposing yeah uh, this is an erosion control I don't know I didn't look at the specs I was letting Chris Baldwin do that. that from the road um, is this an erosion control Mick berm is that what you're yeah, proposing well, it's a double along the, the resource there we're proposing a double so most likely there'll be a, a silt fence and there'll be an erosion control berm along the face of that 
uh, in those critical areas. And the, the goal of that is to place it right at the edge of the existing road. Uh, we've shifted the proposed road up a little bit so that we can kind of use the edge of the existing woods road as kind of a sediment area and then kind of stabilize our soil right there from that point and then push the road uh, north on that plan a little bit to get it away. So uh, we don't plan on doing any disturbance beyond where the existing woods road is. Um, and we will, there is a requirement now um, for erosion control inspections to be done prior to disturbing. So before they start actually doing the road work, we'll be out there doing inspections. And I believe um, they, the applicant did mention at the pre-application meeting that they would be hiring um, Garland Dorsky to do inspections throughout the project. Um, and that may be something that the board wants to consider as part as a condition. Um, of the approval because of the, point, yeah. you know, I think, I think that's appropriate in this case being in such proximity to a, a pretty significant cold water yeah, fishery. Yeah, I, I think we all want to make sure that the water, you know, is, is preserved and I, I frankly, I, I, I think the applicant does too, um, but um, yeah, I think that's something to definitely to consider is whether or not we want to add a, a condition on there for inspections. Um, but at some point, we've talked about this with other projects and everything, there is, a, an erosion control ordinance in place, and um, it is up to the good people of our town to enforce and inspect. So, and, and they've been taking that pretty seriously. Um, is there any more public comment, Allison? Allison McKellar, 79 Mechanic Street. So um, I too was um, confused about the waiver request um, the, at that you know, pre-application meeting. What I had seen um, and heard described you know, was the waiver request to have the road within, uh, within that 75 foot buffer and then looking at the responses that Garley and Dorsky provided to the stormwater questions from the independent reviewer. You know, one of the questions, um, one of the responses also referred to a waiver as kind of a justification for um, the road being within that 75 feet. Um, so um, I think that is, um, you know, was just like a little bit confusing yeah. here. Um, and um, I just, I guess I want to read, I sent all of this to you um, this afternoon, but it's a little bit more just about the context of um, you know why why would why why you need to go ahead and approve the waiver um, today and I really appreciate that the board is taking this extra time to have some independent reviews but um, um, just I guess I, I wrote something that was a little bit more comprehensive but in terms of um, just the waiver um, from the agenda, it appears that the central matter before you today is the request for a waiver for some of the road requirements. Initially, I read that a waiver of the setback requirement from Springbrook was being requested, but I've since learned that it is being treated as a planning and codes office decision to consider the Woods Road already there as an existing road. Although it generally makes good environmental sense to maintain existing roads rather than creating new disturbances, I would question whether the existing condition, conditions constitute a road or a trail. And so I would you know, hope that maybe the board would just talk a little bit about how you determine what an existing um, road is. The unstable conditions along the bank of the stream call for further review. In this case, the existing woods road is perched at the edge of an eroding bank where the channel bends. Streams are in a perpetual state of evolution due to the natural process of erosion. While erosion accelerated by human development should be mitigated and avoided, some erosion is part of the natural process. It creates diversity in the stream substrate and riparian zone, which provides essential habitat for a variety of species, especially brook trout. As headwater streams move from higher elevation bedrock surfaces to more moderate slopes, the channel begins to meander, and the shape and curve of the stream changes over time. This is the case for Spring Brook at the section of road in question. The curve of Spring Brook has been slowly migrating in the direction of the road, and it will continue to do so. Even now, the bank is severely undercut, undermining the soil under the road. If the goal of the waiver is to allow the 
and so this, some of this I wrote when I thought the waiver was requesting something different. Um, if the goal of the waiver is to allow the existing road to remain rather than creating new disturbances, the bank of the, sh of the stream should be further evaluated to be sure that it can be resilient to the type of activity proposed. Although setbacks are generally measured from the normal high water mark of a stream, in this case, uh, normal is difficult to define. If this road is allowed to be further developed, it may be only a matter of time before the entire bank will require major stabilization. As it stands, the proximity of the road to the stream bank seems likely to prevent the installation of erosion control measures during construction. The planning board should verify that the existing woods road can be upgraded to a subdivision road without requiring armoring of the stream bank. My understanding is that the planning board site visit that occurred was during the winter months after heavy snowfall. Under these conditions, I believe neighbors are correct in asserting that the site conditions would be very difficult to properly evaluate. Existing erosion would have been largely obscured by the snow and the frozen ground may have appeared more erosion resistant than is actually the case. Now that the planning board has more complete plans and the snow is melting, it seems that a second site visit would be appropriate. A third party review also of the boundaries of the stream may also be in order. There is discrepancy between various sources and the normal high water mark of Spring Brook is subject to some interpretation. The stream is well known for its quick transformation into a raging torrent that sweeps away large trees. It, appears that significant, it also appears that significant tree removal in the riparian zone is planned. Perhaps the maximum amount permissible under shoreland zoning restrictions, I'm not sure. This removal of vegetation will further accelerate the erosion and lead to additional loss of trees. There will, will there be a requirement that the level of tree canopy in the final approved plan is maintained as older trees eventually die? The shading of the stream is one of the few reasons that it stays cold enough to sustain native brook trout. In addition, applicants made reference to an early meeting uh, in an early meeting to cleaning up the stream of fallen trees, but the board should note that dead wood and other natural debris is generally considered beneficial to stream habitats. The existing tree canopy and even the dead trees in the stream are one of the most important beneficial attributes. It seems that the applicants are committed to integrating with nature as much as possible, and I was encouraged by the initial discussion of possibly elevating the structures on posts to minimize the ecological footprint. This seems like something that would be worthwhile to pursue. Another consideration is whether there could be protections that would prevent the use of pesticides and herbicides due to the special habitat provided by the brook. The additional lighting is likely to attract brown tail moth, which will then likely inspire an appeal from residents for either tree removal or pesticide application, both of which would be detrimental to the adjacent area. Ticks are another consideration that should be mitigated in a way that doesn't impact the natural resource. The Camden Hills, including the area proposed for development, is designated as an area of statewide ecological significance. Um, and I have a link to that full document. But the fall, but, um, and then I also sent just, uh, you know, some quotes from that. But, you know, basically, this is an area that's not just um, special to Camden. It has um, statewide ecological significance. These roadless blocks um, are increasingly less common in coastal areas. Um, and I just, I think that this is a case where um, the board can make it better by taking longer and that um, you should do that if possible and take an additional site walk. Um, I'm certainly not disputing that the applicants have the right to do this and it seems if they can do it in the way they're proposing it would you know be a very positive thing but um, also the the question of the rights of the public rights of way and the past trails I sent some information about that but um, it seems that if you approve one aspect of this tonight um, it might be limiting in the future, and so that's really my only concern with the road waiver at this point, that of a slightly wider road further away from the stream may be in the long-term best interest um, if that's within the planning board's purview. Thanks. Thank you. Does anyone else from the public have any comments? Sure. I agree with the, um, you have to come to the podium, please. It's not on the waiver, but it's on the project itself. Could you come to the podium? Yeah. Yep. There will be comment time on the project itself at the next hearing. Oh, okay. Well, I uh, definitely agree with um, Allison on that because um, my family's owned land abutting this whole project since 1953. Oh. And um, the brook trout, I fish for brook trout in that, in that stream, and they are quite a ways up in there. And um, 
it's true in the summertime, the brook dries up, but the pools don't. The fish is still there. Um, I'm just concerned about the construction stuff will go into the into the brook and stuff like that. But yep. uh, um, I I totally agree because I mean I've known that area. I've lived there almost all my life. So yeah, yep. that's that's good to know. You're the first person who's been able to say for sure there's brook trout in there. Allison's oh, been telling us. I, I can. But yeah, <laughs> I can get your pictures. Yep. No, no, I, yep. it's it's yep. good to know. And 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 I think we all we all are very concerned about you know preserving that brook. Yeah. Um. So so that's 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 great. In addition to that, I'm. I've hunted deer all my life, yeah. and I can show you areas where the deer are. And I'm sure, Ed, you know, they walk that road, and they go right down across Route 1 because they're street smart, and they go right down to the ocean. Yeah. And um, so, I mean, I think, you know, definitely this is going to have an impact on the wildlife. Sure. For sure. So yeah. I have more comments on the project. Yeah, we'll, we'll save those for the, if we get okay. down there today. Oh, sorry about that. Bruce Tolman, 520 Belfast Road. Thanks, Bruce. Yep. Yeah, I mean, if you want to just bring it up and sort of wave it at us, that'd be great. <laughs> Could you, maybe, could, like. you maybe yeah, is, could you email it to me, too, so I can put it into the record? Sure. Uh, that's what it looks like right now. This is probably, yes, this is probably what it looks like right now. Mm -hmm. um, we are, in this point, walking back towards Route 1, yep. where this is about the stretch of road yep. that would be widened, that's being discussed. Off, yep. be the, one, the part that would be widened that is uh, right over the bridge. But yeah, I'll go ahead and email that. If you don't mind. Oh, I don't yeah. mind at all. Is that your dog? Yes, those are <laughs> <laughs> my daughter's dogs. But uh, just so you guys can see, this is, uh, this is from yeah, probably eight years back. But I know before you guys started this. Is this the road? The road that the dogs are on. Yeah, I'm just that's shuffling that's so many spot. papers I today. Know, I'm, I'm a mess. Right I'm not in my zone. Where is my process? There it is. The one I need. Okay, uh, anyone else in the public have any comments? Okay, seeing none, I will, I will now go ahead and close the first public comment period. And um, now the board has an opportunity to ask questions of the applicant and or any of the public who spoke. I have a few. Okay, guess so. Um, mostly just... Um I know we discussed some of it at the, the pre-app, but um, what's the road surface material on this stretch of road going to be, or in the whole project, but particularly on this? Right now, we have it proposed as gravel. We've had discussions about uh, making that potentially asphalt due to the steep slopes of it. Um, it'll hold it in place better, but right now, we're proposing gravel for that section. And so based on the condition of what it is, I mean, I've, we've heard talk about it being soft, but I know a, a woods road after one winter can be seem soft uh, just from vegetation. So, what's your expectation of what, um, how much work is going to need to be done on that stretch to the get it ready? The road elevations are going to be it's going to be elevated through that section. It's in the low spot, you know. So, so what we're going to do is essentially we're going to remove uh, a few inches of the existing material, place down a geotextile fabric that will keep the soft soils from penetrating into the good soil. And then the good soil and road will be built on top of that. You know, we're trying to minimize what's there. We'll take it as little as we can, um, but that will firm that base road base up, and the fabric will prevent that poor soil from penetrating into the good soil, if you will. That way, we can kind of avoid having to cut it all out of there and dig down deep. We can leave as much as we can in that location. I can tell you that the woods roads are were very well built when they were built. They, they are. That, that is one thing. I mean, they're, they're drivable. I mean, granted, there are certain times that, like, probably now. Nothing's <laughs> drivable, right? Yeah. 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 Right now, but, uh, no, I, yeah, I've seen, I mean, you've seen vehicles down in those areas uh, for various purposes, you know, the other parts of the year. Except but there, for, yeah. That particular stretch has about six inches of moss on it. So yeah. yeah. When you walk, I mean, it feels quite small. Right. I mean, it's, it, you know, I, I was thinking about it that, you know, it's, it's held up for however long since that Woods Road was put in. Uh, and a lot of those ones that are on sides have 
are often very well done. I was just curious how much your work would be disturbing the top surface. Yeah, yeah there'll be yeah, 18 inches of gravel underneath the road per the ordinance. Yeah. So, yeah, I think they think, you know, right, that's in the cross section. Right, I mean, we yeah. know that from the road plan. I was just thinking yeah. of, of what are you escaping, uh, yeah. We believe that road historically was used to, to pull gravel out at some point. Um, out of that core. It was mined in there, right? Whatever's <laughs> in there, yeah. So, uh, okay. Anything else? Oh, go ahead, John. Oh, sorry. Um, Allison made some comments about uh, Spring Brook and how the that particular curve in the stream bed might be migrating or has the potential of migrating. What are your thoughts on that potential? As far as the stream migrating? Correct. The, the, the outside of the bend there that uh, is coming closest to the road that you're getting the requesting the waiver from. I can tell you that on the opposite on the opposite bank facing this area, there is erosion. There's a there's a portion of the cliff that's kind of sheared off, but that's on the, the other side. Of the, the southern road. side. Yeah. But I'm not I'm not aware of any in particular. Well, that that bank is pretty heavily forced down to the to the brook, so I mean that's going to help slow that. Yeah. Correct. Connected to that, to John's question, to follow up, sorry not to interrupt, but there was also a question about how much is going to be removed vegetation from that hillside um, on, on, the, on the bank of the stream, on the north side of the stream. You know, the intent is to not touch the vegetation on the downhill side. I mean, that would be the worst thing. We did what, um, so we had the Forrester uh, mark the property for Forest Health. Right. Um, we've shared the Jeremy asked that we go back and have them do a particular study along along the shoreline area um, using the, the official method to do that. We've done that and done all the tree counts. Um, Did you turn on that mic there? Sure, sorry. Yeah. And Will, I think yours is off too. <laughs> sorry, that, that's Ed Hansen, 440 Belfast Road. Yep. So, um, so the, we completed all the forestry studies. Um, the trees were marked. Um, after he did the, the, the detailed uh, shoreline evaluation, we went back and remarked, I think, two trees that really shouldn't be taken, but everything else was, was quite well within the parameters um, with the trees that were marked. Um, we, with that said, we've taken probably half of the trees that were marked. Um, so there are trees there now. If you go down, you'll see blue marks on that. We chose to keep, even though the forester had said we should take them for forest health. Mm -hmm. um, but that's about the extent of what we plan to do. And not so all the, all the trees taken out have already been taken, yeah. essentially? Okay. Yeah. So for road construction yeah, on the right. downhill side, there's there's no. It's one of the reasons we asked for the waiver is to not right. get into making that wider there. Right. And could you you mentioned that you're going to sort of have a bit of a berm on the southern <coughs> edge of that road. So then will it be somewhat grade? Will the road have a bit of grade away from that edge for any? Yeah, that's the intent uh, is to kind of pitch it back into the that little there. low area and all that. Yep. And that's, so some, that's in some of the stormwater right, to, to the north, correct? That's in some of the stormwater. And we, what we're doing is we're we're doing a lot of uh, French drains through that section because there's no real clean way to. We don't want to put a big culvert in there, run water right over the bank. So we're doing a lot of uh, French drains, picking up a perimeter drain, picking it up along the edge of the road, and we're discharging it through small underdrain pipes to allow it to kind of run through there and then be Into controlled, the, slow yeah. discharge. So along the brook area, most of the trees that we took were dead or dying um, the the forests are recommended in the inland fisheries and wildlife also recommend that we take the hemlocks because they're they're all badly infected and ha don't have long to live and with those trees if they if they die and, and they fall over it opens the bank up and you do get a significant erosion problem so we decided to take those for forest health um, um, and as far as taking you know removing trees from the brook we don't have any plans at this point to remove any trees from the brook if they're there, they're yeah. keeping them there. That'd be a heck of a project. And, yeah. and the rest of the property, we're keeping a, quite a few dead, dead trees specifically for habitat as well. Mm -hmm. um, did you, we, were you done, John, or did you have something? I was just going to say, um, I think during construction, and this is something we can get to, I think it's important to, um, in sensitive areas, and I'm sure you guys understand this, um, do the work 
and then keep going, like finish this area and then move on. I don't want another, um, okay. let's say, middle school project. Right. You don't want a right. whole area opened that right. can't be controlled. Right. So I think that's something we can probably mm -hmm. condition the approval condition on stages, too. Condition stages, essentially. Just so people out there know, I mean, what we're talking about is um, so they don't come in, build, try to build the entire road all at one time without stabilizing it, stabilize it in sections, um, and then move on um, to the rest of the road. That makes sense to everyone. It, it's very steep slopes up there, you know, the whole side steep. So it's going to be imperative that they yeah. they do it like that and in sections to make sure pieces are stabilized in between storm that events to make sure nothing. There's no surprises up through there mm -hmm. for the entire site. Okay. And so the, our, our third party, um, Chris Baldwin, did look at like this level lip spreader here and these under drains that are daylighting. Um, he did look at all these, so I, I just keep that in mind. He, he is reviewing these. And I think what um, Andrew was saying, he's going to try to pitch the road this way, yep, right. right, so that it can get into some under drains and then come out this way eventually. So it's not, everything's not, normally you crown the road. Right. So half of the road, half the water goes this way, the other half goes that way. I think the intent is to get everything to go back towards the property, the Sloping homes. Uphill. Yeah. And John, did you have anything further? You're all set. Chris, are you? I was just, um, just in terms of the, do you have a sense of what the foundations on those two, the last two houses are going to be? You're speaking to E1 and E2. Yeah, will those mostly be footings or? Yeah, yes, at this point, uh, we, Garland Dorsky's also been doing the engineering on foundations, and the structures are going to require a footing. So uh, we but hope not, to do some pylons, some some. Uh, but posts. not full basement. I guess is my question. No, over no, there. no. At the, I think the most will be frost wall and energy code compliant. But I'm, I'm just particularly yeah. thinking of those two, those last two on the left, as where that water is draining into that low area right, and having right. concrete walls under the frost barrier would be preferable. Not right. Right. Understand. They're doing amazing things with helical piles now, too. So, I mean, that's another option um, where yep. you could really minimize impacts. We've looked at the, we've, we've discussed that with the builder. The, the soil is, is, is very rocky. It's yeah. very, very difficult to find a place to, to drive that. anything. So I understand that, too. <laughs> it's Maine, after all. Lucia, did you have anything? I do. I have a question um, regarding the corner of Nordhaven. Well, first, I applaud you for minimizing the um, the road area and for trying to keep as many trees as possible. But the corner of Nordhaven and um, this Fosdale mm -hmm. lane, what is the visibility around that curb? And the reason I ask this is because I live on a private road that is about 16 feet wide and we have about eight full-time residents, but the amount of traffic that goes up and down that road is unbelievable. And this is a very steep, steep road. So I guess my question is, um, and I see that there is a parking area right there, which would allow for some, you know, leeway in if two cars meet or whatever, but someone coming down that road you know, is there potential for a mirror or something so that? So the question is somebody coming down Nordhaven, will they see somebody coming down Fosdale? Is that the? Well, if someone is turning into that road. Oh, into Fosdale. Yes, yep. yes, where it narrows, right, 12 feet. Yes. Well, it, it doesn't uh, narrow until you get past all that parking. So we've intentionally here. Okay. So, so my question still stands is um, if someone, is, let's say a truck, a yeah. propane truck is turning onto Fosdale mm -hmm. and you have someone coming out of their driveway down towards Nordhaven, um, will will the two see each other? I don't know how many yeah, trees so the are there. Up, I don't know the how. The uphill of that curve, mm -hmm. right there where that intersection is, we've got a ditch line there. And so that area is, is, is completely open and visible across mm -hmm. that, that curve. Is this where you're referring but to? I'm talking about uh, coming down from the driveways from, say you live in one of the two up at the top. Right, so the parking and driveways are oh, up here? Yeah, they're up Foster. Oh, coming here. Yes. So if you're coming down this way? Yes, exactly. Will you see a car that's coming this way or somebody that's turning here? Correct. Well, so this is probably the most open yeah. part of the entire 
area. I think that's the only it's, visible place on. Uh, uh, I know <laughs> it, it was it was actually intentionally designed to accommodate uh, the emergency vehicle turnaround. So it's okay. overly wide. It's overly long. The grades are very minor. I think they're like uh, three to five percent through that area. Yes. Um, and there will be a full stop at the end of Fossendale. So there'll be there'll be a stop sign there that prevents people from kind of driving out to control traffic in that location. Yeah, it's about the only flat piece on the property. Is that where the skitter was. When we walked yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It's right, it's right, yeah. That, it's right to the left as we came out of the field at the top of the hill, right to the left. It was kind of flat in through that one still, little area. That's where we have this whole still kind of open field. Intersect. It still yes, is, yes. Yep. So there's, there's enough visibility yeah. going there's up plenty, that road. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That was my only question. Good question. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, I don't have anything right now um, for the applicants or the public, so we will move to the second uh, public comment period. Um, if anybody from the public wishes to speak or has any questions based on what we've heard, obviously we're looking only for any new uh, testimony or questions. And again, we're still on the, just a waiver. Yep. Um, see, Shanley, did you have something? Oh, okay. Just... <laughs> yep. Um, okay. So, um, seeing no public comments, Jeremy, you have nothing online or anything like that, of course. Yep. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and close the public comment period. No more further uh, questions from the public, and the board now will begin uh, deliberation. I'm going to be supportive of the waiver. When the time comes, I uh, am influenced by the idea that it's an existing forest road and had an opportunity to walk that in the winter time. And, and uh, um, uh, the uh, concept of draining away from the creek uh, and uh, narrowing the road is all sort of a package of, of approaching this in what I think is a responsible fashion. So uh, I uh, echo some of the comments made about the importance of erosion control during the construction of the road and um, anything that could beef up the language regarding that by the time this subdivision comes back for its final approval, uh, I'd appreciate. But uh, uh, I'll, uh, I'll be voting yes on this waiver. Okay. Anything you want to yeah, my, my general sense is, uh, as John said, I mean, to me, you know, especially because what we're actually discussing is a waiver to let them make the road narrower than, our, than we're requiring. So what you're asking for is to make a smaller road <laughs> and be less impactful yeah. uh, is always something that appeals to me. Rather, you know, usually we get here people want to make a wider road. And um, so it's safe. It's less impact by, you know, so I think it's great. I think it's use what's there. And as John says, we walked it and, you know, it is a steep bank, but there's no sign that, you know, as I said, that road clearly is held up for a long time. So, mm -hmm. okay. Mattia, anything? Um, no, I, I too, I, I support this. I think, um, you know, the construction has to be very cautiously done. Um, and I think the question was answered about um, the visibility and, you know, two cars meeting on that road. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Murray? I agree with many of the comments of the other board members. I think it's a well-designed uh, plan here, and I, I do chairman uh, support it. Okay. And as, just for purposes of process, this really isn't the appropriate time to put the step-by-step condition on the road construction really this is just we'll just address the waiver now and then do that down the road if we if the board so decides um yeah so i too um for me it's, it's it seems common sense an existing um road not making it larger um serving only two houses really right i mean that's what we're talking about here and the sign off from the from the ch police chief um and uh primary concern is going to always be, um, and I think we put the applicant on notice, the erosion control. Um, that's, I think everybody's really concerned, including the applicants, about the, the quality of that brook. 
Um, and and I, 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 I think that everybody would be uh, well served to, to take note that that's going to be an issue going forward. Um, but from my perspective, a smaller road serving two houses, um, sign off from the police or the, the fire chief that as far as the, the safety issue, um, I'm okay with it. So uh, I think we, we know how this is going to go, but we, uh, we'll entertain a motion and a vote. I'll make a motion to approve the waiver. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Mr. Murray? Aye. John? Aye. Crystal? Aye. Aye. Lucia? Aye. And it's an aye from me. So moved. The waiver is approved. Um, and that takes care of that portion of the old business that is now complete. Um, so we're only at 6:30. That was we're moving along pretty well. How long? Do, how long do we? Uh, we how much appetite do we have for this tonight? Uh, keep moving. Yeah. yeah. Not surprisingly, the applicants are. Oh, they're they're they've anxious. Got lots to of energy. Moving. I mean, we we have we we have um you know we, we yeah. won't be able to get to final approval of the entire plan because we haven't seen the final stormwater right stuff. So. Um, we can open the hearing. We can we can open the hearing. On the do we we need to have a little introduction, Jeremy, or from you, or we've okay. already had the applicants, you know, general introduction. Yeah, I mean, I think it's important to just remember what the primary pur the purpose of the preliminary plan is, and it's to provide enough information to the board, and it's from the ordinance for a preliminary determination that the proposed subdivision will meet the approval standards of Article um, Eight, Title. Um, and Title um, 30A MRSA 4401, which is the state subdivision um, standards. Um, so if you want to maybe roll over to um, the approval standards, uh, it might be a pertinent time to do that. Um, You're speaking to, based on the preliminary plan, approving the standards? Well, again, just looking at the, what the ordinance says, does the preliminary plan provide enough information for the board Preliminary determination that proposed subdivision will meet those approval standards, and this is where I think it's important to maybe just go through them, um, and just you know, and this is we're talking about um, in your code two thirty five eight point one and you know on. So we're talking about pollution. There's standards that you have to look at, yep. um, and I think now is the time to go through that so that the if anything. You know, is of concern. Is of concern. Get it into the final. You can get into the final. I'm following yep. you. What you, I'm, I'm following what you're saying. There. Makes sense. It does. Okay. Makes great sense. Um. You have a copy of the applicant's submissions. Right. Yes. And they gave it to the applicant. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Yep. And Ethan, if you'd like, I, I have a copy of the subdivision ordinance. Um, right here. I don't know if you have it in front of you. I do have okay, my, perfect. my grand book. I'll borrow your copy. You'll borrow? Okay, those are the approval standards, um, and that's those are consistent with the state subdivision um, statute. Right. I'm getting so many papers today. So much paper. <laughs> Lots of paper. We're going to try to get rid of these nine copies of everything um, eventually and try to get things digitally and maybe just six <laughs> copies or something paper. Mm -hmm. A lot of paper. What are the paper? 235 8.1. You got it there, Crystal? So? Yeah. Is that in, is that in our, our code here, Jeannie? Yeah. It's in, I gave you a copy of their submission. Yeah. Yeah. It's also, yeah. And I've got this one. Easy yeah. You want to, Andrew, you know what page your um, that stuff is on your out of here. Yeah. You just maybe go to it. Twenty. Basically, page. Okay. I think that's it. Third yeah. page. Well, but if you can go a couple pages in. That's it. Yeah, it's just where it starts with pollution. <laughs> yep. It is. Okie dokie. <laughs> All right, so covering the review standards, um, first one is uh, the approval standards is uh, 235.8.1, um, the state standard. Proposed subdivision will not result in undue water or air pollution. In making the determination, the board shall at least consider the elevation of the land above sea level and its relation to floodplains. 
the nature of soils and subsoils and their ability to adequately support waste disposal, the slope of the land and its effect on effluents, the availability of streams for disposal of effluents. Not sure how that's going to go that over. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to chuckle, but that no, doesn't, it doesn't make I, a lot of sense. Yeah, I, it's like, yeah, let's just throw it right in there. Um, <laughs> well, in the old days. Yeah, that's kind of how, how it's done. Um, and the applicable state and local health and water resources rules and regulations. Um, <laughs> so um, the proposed subdivision shall not discharge wastewater or stormwater to a water body without license from the Department of Environmental Protection. That's the performance standard. Um, and the applicant's input is that the uh, proposed yeah. development has been designed to minimize impacts to the natural conditions see attached plants. So um, any discussion among the board here or questions? No, I mean, I think, you know, I think that's where we're, you know, there's a little bit of the stormwater piece that we're finalizing, but I feel like that's, and certainly in terms of wastewater, that's very clearly laid out. Yeah, and, and we feel like based on the representations and what the back and forth that we have seen, um, this is being addressed and close to approval from our uh, independent expert. I do um, have a question for the applicant. It's, so from my understanding, you've got the, the road canted towards the north. And then you're catching, you were talking about French drains. You have to, that's French, it's Greek to me, but um, you, you've got the, you're catching it up there, but then there's going to be smaller pipes running under the road and then going down the bank, essentially to the stream eventually. Yes. yes. And is that a necessary yeah, feature? Un unfortunately, it is. The main doesn't have suitable soils to infiltrate anything, so mm -hmm. you have to always discharge it. We have clay and rock here. Mm -hmm. So the best way to do that is we're going to run it through a, a French drain. It's a stone channel that's a couple of feet wide. We size it based on the volume of water uh, with a uh, perforated pipe down at the bottom of that. So the water from the road will run into the under drain system, filter down through the rock, and then there'll be a discharge point that has a four to six inch pipe. So it'll be a small outlet uh, to control the flow. And then at the outlet, there'll be, uh, we're, we're trying to use a Curlex and Excelsior blanket, which is like a fiber mesh material. So there'll be some Curlex out there to make sure there's no erosion at the outlet of that rather than put more rock in that location. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll all be collected, discharged into that, specifically at that lower section there. Mm -hmm. In addition to just along the road, we're putting some of those same trenches up and around that lower bowl area, I like to call it, uh, to kind of do the same <coughs> thing, to pick it up and then to try to discharge it through. And for small flows, you know, normal storms when it's relatively dry, I mean, that trench has to fill up to a point to get into the perforated pipe. And so there will be opportunities for that water to infiltrate and not always have to discharge through a pipe. But when you get a, a heavy storm, then, you know, it, water's going everywhere. And right. so we need to be able to plan for those higher flows. Right. And, and we're seeing more and more of those, unfortunately. Right. It's, it's, it's small pipe rather than a large culvert. Right, is what rather than collect it and send it all to one location, we're putting a bunch of cross pipes in so that in no one location do we have a large amount of flow, which reduces the potential for erosion. So what we're, what we're going to see is, as you sort of said, multi points of small pipes coming out with the, the fabric sort of catching that. But it is eventually, this is basically designed to run down the hill, the hill. towards the stream. It yep. is. Yep. It is. Yeah, there's, yep. unfortunately, there's no better way to, there's no other way to discharge water. The site drains there now. It's a natural receiving area. It kind of runs over and through the road, takes the erosion with it. So the goal will be to try to contain it and improve the situation with our, with our measures that we're proposing. Okay. We're not, we're not rerouting any of the flow. The flow that, the natural flow that happens there today travels over the road and down into the brook. Um, right, so but we'll be we'll be talking about disturbed soils and, and a new road construction. So right. it is it is conceivable and, and likely that there'll be more sediment coming out of there than there is today until it's stabilized. Right, right. but it, but the advantage of doing it this way though is that that sediment's going to run back towards this this uh, stone trench. Right, and it's instead just of just running off the road and down over sure. the hill. So when it gets discharged, hopefully most of that sediment's going to get trapped in that right. in that stone trench. Can I just um, 
the pollution standard. It's an odd one, to be honest, because we also have stormwater right, and say this. control right. standards. Um, but I, um, Andrew commented about the, uh, I don't know, you said Curlex or Excelsior fabric or um, jute mesh or whatever you're planning to use. Can I um, ask the board to have them find a product that does not have plastic? Yeah, they actually, they make one that's plastic free. Okay. They, they've come up with that and it's the same, same company, same everything. So they do have a, a plastic free fabric. The same does the same thing. We've run into it. The town has used it. We did a project over in Continental. All kinds of shredded. And it's, you know, everything is vegetated, but now we still have this plastic that's sticking up out of the ground in areas still, and it's forever and it gets mowed, so it's going to be chopped up. Um, which is not good. So if we can just make sure they use a biodegradable it's not. Um, fabric or Excelsior blanket in part of the approval, that would be great. Okay, and is that is that something that needs to be replaced at time to time, or is it? No, it's no. That's, that's, that's to get it to stabilize. Yeah, the purpose yeah. of that is to get the vegetation to stabilize. Yep. Um, so it is. It's like a woven. They have like thin plastic is how some of them are, and then they have fibers kind of tucked into it to make this like blanket. Yeah. But they do make a, a wood fiber that's it's string essentially. Yeah. That they hold it together that gives the same support. Yeah. So we used we'll to have sure a we, we used to, to have a stormwater expert on our board, but we no longer do. And you can you can see that I'm not he. Uh, <laughs> We're in favor of using that material. Yeah. Okay. So, but we could condition that, and you'd be happy with that. Yeah. Okay. Um, any more from the board? On, on the pollution issue, we're going to be going over some similar stuff when we get to, the, as we said, like the stormwater, stormwater and everything else. Um, do you want to do all these, go through them, and then run one motion? Or do we want to? Yeah, find out a list. Or do you want to find on each one? All you're doing is seeing whether they've submitted. Enough yeah, we're not that, even right. making a motion. Yeah. We're just. Okay, got it. We're just kind of doing yeah. a checklist. The, yeah. We're looking through to see. Is there anything that we? I just want to, you know, keep getting to the approval. We're looking you know. for the questions. <laughs> right, we're looking at conditions. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, so um, two thirty-five eight two is sufficient water, um, and we're looking at the state standard and then the performance standards. Um, the proposed, the applicant says, the proposed subdivision has sufficient water available for the reasonably foreseeable needs of the subdivision. Um, They've and the performance standard is the private wells. When a proposed subdivision will not be served by public water, water supply shall be from individual wells or a private community water system. And we have a letter from local well driller. Um, and they've got indications that there are multiple well sites and pump houses on the, on the plan. Yep. And then the fire protection, we've talked about that. They're going to have a cistern on site for um, storage tanks yep. for, the, for the water there and, and the chief chiming in on that. Um, anyone on that? I have a quick comment that, um, you know, I was, if I was anxious about this review, it was not having a affirmative memo from the fire chief until today. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I know that that's beyond some of our control, but um, uh, that was an important piece of information that didn't come in until the 11th hour. So yeah. that caused me some anxiety. Which one's this? <laughs> I'm sorry. We don't want to make John anxious. That we hadn't heard Fire back Chief from, we no. hadn't heard, but we hadn't heard, we didn't get that till today. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, let him know not to keep us waiting yeah. next time. Or just, at least John. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know if it, I don't know if it's the Fire Chief or, Right, or the applicant, what right? The yeah. yeah. Okay. I think what, to be honest, I think what we're going to try to do um, with staff is meet with developers or their engineers ahead of time um, before submittal, um, like maybe a month before submittal, so that we can nail this stuff down department wide, you know, each department, rather than giving a department head two weeks or five days to respond to us is just not, not easy sometimes. So we'll, we'll deal with that in the future. Okay. Um, and then the design guidelines, we have the um, public water is not available. Um, the private wells shall meet the requirements of CMR Chapter 232. And we have the licensed well driller. Yep. And then the fire protection. So we really covered all of that. 
And there is no municipal water supply. So right, no municipal water supply. I just want to make sure I'm not running over anybody. If you have anything, no. just cheer, chime in. Is, and Mr. Murray, you're still with us. So if you have any questions or concerns, please just speak up. We're moving pretty quickly through this. Okay, so now we're into the erosion, which I think is a pretty significant um, portion. But again, we're just looking at the, the whether you know they, they provided the information. Um, so 235, 8.4 erosion, the state standard, the proposed subdivision will not cause unreasonable sedimentation or reduction in the land's capacity to hold water so that a dangerous or unhealthy condition results. Then you've got the performance standards, the proposed subdivision shall prevent soil erosion from entering water bodies, wetlands, and adjacent properties. The procedures outlined in the erosion and sedimentation control plans shall be implemented during the site preparation, construction, and cleanup stages. The board may waive submission of the erosion and sedimentation control plan if the project will not involve grading, which changes drainage patterns. That will not be happening, obviously. Um, the design guidelines, erosion control measures shall meet the standards of the main erosion and sediment control handbook with construction, best management practices. Disturbed land shall be exposed for the shortest time possible. Hay bales, silt fences, and other techniques to capture sediment during construction shall be placed between areas of construction activity in stream channels, ditches, and other elements of the drainage system. Topsoil and other materials excavated from or brought to the site of development should not be stockpiled on the site in a manner that allows sedimentation into any water course. Disturbed areas shall be mulched and seeded and planted as soon as con after construction is practicable. Areas in which there has been insufficient catch by the time the growing season ends shall be properly remulched if necessary. All temporary erosion control, control structures shall be removed from the site as soon as vegetative cover has become well established. And the applicant's input on this one is that erosion and sediment control has been designed to comply with the town and state standards. See the attached plan set and attached erosion control narrative. I've looked over the narrative in the plans. Is there anything from anybody? on the board on this one. I have a quick question. Or, um, first of all, I applaud <coughs> the applicant for putting a buffer along the, um, the property line where the, uh, you're going to be doing a lot of clearing and um, uh, putting in the septic system. Mm -hmm. And just along with erosion control, when, when is the buffer going in? The, the planted buffer there, um, it, it'll be a combination of being placed after. The, so it's a field there now. It's in that. We're using that big field area. And all our proposed disturbance is actually within the field area. So we're not proposing to remove any additional trees in between there. But once the septic field is in and we can properly place that and get the drainage and everything taken care of, then the buffer will go back in. So unfortunately, it'll be after all that construction activity happens. But then they can extend it as far as they can you know, in that area once they, once everything's settled and in place. Okay. And uh, just, yes. just to follow up on that, what type of a buffer are you looking at? And, yeah. You're looking at evergreen or? Evergreens, yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? No, I mean, I think, you know, we've had multiple conversations about erosion and issues. I think we're, as we've said, we're pretty close to having that handled from Cumberland County. Good. Yeah. I may also add to this um, that a, the DEP, the stormwater permit by rule that we submitted to them, that's 90% that's of that application. Right. It's all about okay. erosion and sediment control, and you have to provide a plan. Uh, that's all been included in here, but they did review and approve that. So a few things we're waiting for from the soil conservation is we had an invert on a pipe wrongly labeled and we didn't give them a detail for a level spreader. We want to know the stone size and a level spreader. So those are the, the two details, two or three little details are waiting for for the, the stormwater to re finalize his review. So it's very minor yep. stuff. Yep. Okay. Appreciate that. Um, yeah. So I think, you know, this, this is something that we, when we get to, we'll, um, for the actual approval. Yeah. I mean, we've we already can, talked we about have, some of the caveats that we'll put yeah. in place on. Yeah. But certainly it's been addressed. Um, anyone else? John? Okay. Uh, 235-8.5 traffic. Um, have we have the, Do you have traffic? the attached main DOT entrance permit. Um, can, I, can I just go back to um, erosion because that's where we were, right? Yes, we were just on erosion. Um, 
I don't know if you want to more clearly clarify what you're asking for for um, I mean because this is they want to be able to have enough information so they can take it and go move forward for their final um, but are you looking for what we were talking about um, you know uh, have it the whether stage, it be Gartley and Dorsky stage construction, stage construction and, and requiring that Gartley and Dorsky oversee the project during construction right. um, and I mean I just I think it's important that they know that now so they can work that into the their final approval got it yeah. yeah I mean that'll be in there but I, I'm, I'm more thinking about um, during construction right. that's always to me, that's the that's the real that's, go that's the hard pro, the hard time um, that always runs. We we run afoul of, of things. So I want to make sure that you guys are are good with it and that the applicant knows what the expectation is. Right. Okay. So is everybody understanding what, what Jeremy's saying and Mark also? Um, I, I think I do. But will that become a component of the motion? That would become a when we get to the point of approval, it would become a condition. Right. So what we want to do right now is discuss as a board whether we whether we want to put that condition, we, we whether we envision putting that condition on in the future so that the applicant is aware of it and there, therefore they can they can address they that. Can incorporate it before we ask for it. Yeah. And Mark, are you understanding what we're talking about here? I don't know if you're on mute. I think he's muted. I, I was on mute, but yes, I am. Okay. So, um, any discussion among the board? I, I certainly would support the stage development that's been discussed. I certainly would support a condition um, having Gartley and Dorsky oversee the sediment and erosion control and a special uh, notice or special uh, gift basket to the town to make sure they get out there as often as possible to make sure that, that, that they also think um, that, that it meets the standards. All of those things, you know, really joking on the last one, but um, but but I, I would support those, and I would want to let the applicant know that those are things that we envision happening um, in the future. I think Jeremy mentioned reinspection during that during that time, mm -hmm. reinspection of the control along the road. A pre-inspection, right? You... Well, we're we're going to do we're going to do, do a we do a, a, an inspection initial, but what I, I'm hoping. We always run into this problem when we, when we know that there's a storm event coming and the contract the earthwork guys aren't really keeping an eye on what the weather's doing. They open something up. I mean, I, I'd like something that I mean, I think Will and Andrew understand what I'm getting at. Absolutely, that, we, that do it, there's we do it something, quite often. Yeah, trend plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Permitting requirements. Whenever you do have stream crossings or any of these type of projects, you have to do a very detailed construction sequencing. You know, it's a step one. You know place erosion sediment control barriers step two you know check that you know so it it goes through a, a number of sequences that we can easily put right on the plan uh, for this this section of road specifically in question yep and ahead of storm events they check it after storm events check it again to make sure if there was a failure that's fixed so yeah, it doesn't want, it doesn't repeat because failures, failures will happen occasionally and, and right. you got to get after them quick yeah okay um so you're, you're pretty much on notice as far as what we're looking at. We understand. Well, yeah. if, if there's any questions, we'll reach out to Jeremy to make sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Make sure we're on the same page. Okay, that's good. Um, all right. So that you, you all set there, Jeremy. I am. Thank you for that. That's that's helpful. Um, let's get back to where we were. So then we were on to traffic. Um, we have a DOT entrance permit. Um, the general private road standard is the approval by a, of a subdivision plan by the planning board shall not constitute or be evidence of any acceptance by the town of any road easement shown on yeah. such plan. And the board shall require the plan to contain appropriate notes to the effect. All subdivision roads shown on an approved subdivision shall be presumed to be private roads unless such roads are accepted as public roads by the town, which doesn't seem like a, a likely thing here. Um, no, and it's covered in there. Yeah, we, we have that specific note on our subdivision plan. Yep. Yeah. And, and then the rest of this is pretty well covered in there. Right. So I'm not going to go ahead and read this and entire, the entire the maintenance thing. and yeah. I mean, it, it, it it's a road that you know clearly would never. I mean, the town's not going to take it on. So yeah. Right. No. <laughs> like, even if they wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but their their covenants cover that pretty well. So. Okay. Yeah, I don't think there's anything special that we're going to go through here. We'll just look at the design guidelines. You got the entrance permits, um, the design standards, uh, 18 feet, but then there's a waiver that we've already approved. 
Um, required road maintenance notes have been added to the plans per the applicant. Uh, utilities will be installed per ordinance and electrical and telecommunication underground. underground. Street construction standards. We've got those. Provided set. Yep. Okay. Anybody have anything on the streets and roads? Yeah, I, I have a quick question. Um, section 4.2, you say it is covered in the covenant. Um, the declarance rights, Article 4, on um, page 8 of the declarance rights, it mentions that the, um, the declarant makes um, no, assur no assurance that any such land be added nor any um, any portion of such land may be added and shall <coughs> have the right to construct and install utility systems and other infrastructure including but not limited to roads and other easements. Um, and I guess this is, does this, is this specific to the road that's being constructed or does this state that um, after completion, so because section 4.2 says completion and modification of improvements. Right. So is that after the fact of this being completed, um, you know, it's my, my question is, is, is yeah, I think this that gives them the right to. No, it's, it's intended to be a reservation of future development rights. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's future. And, and it's also that, you know, this is slightly different than a standard subdivision where the, the residents don't own the land. So the condominium association owns the road and, and all of that. So it's a slightly different structure than some right, right, standard right. subdivision. So. Yep. Okay. Thank okay. you. Anyone else? Okay. Um, good questions. Uh, design guidelines. Uh, where was I already passed that? Sewage. Moving on to sewage disposal. Um, 235 8.6 sewage disposal. Uh, the state standard is proposed subdivision will provide for adequate sewage waste disposal and will not cause an unreasonable burden on municipal services. It's not applicable there, but the adequate sewage disposal. Um, we have a private system with an attached letter from the licensed soil evaluator and supporting test logs. Um, the, rec the summary is that the site contains adequate soils to support multiple subservice wastewater disposal systems such as are envisioned for this project. Anyone on the soil and the sewage issue? No, I think it's a perfect use of the field. Grass is always greener over the septic <laughs> tank. <isn't it? laughs> well, hopefully not. Right. <laughs> it's supposed to be over the leach field. That's what it really should Good. say. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know about that. Um, I, I have a quick comment that the, the, the uh, septic system in the drain field, unless I've missed something, is not in a specific track. It's just on a portion of the property. The, the septic field? The septic field in the... Uh, no, that's pretty. The whole yeah, so we've, septic we've system. We've shown it. We've it's shown the location clearly. of it. Yes. I'm at the top of the hill there. Yeah. yeah. We, we conducted uh, test pitting to make sure there was suitable soil for that. Uh, and we're proposing uh, to utilize a large field to serve up to 22 <coughs> bedrooms. And, and I recognize that. My my question, or maybe it's a comment, is, is I'm used to seeing these sorts of facilities in a specific track. That's sort of identified. Oh, on a and, separate parcel. Well, it, it, yeah, it's it's identified. Um, you know, th there'd be a dashed line around it, and this is the the, the system. And it's just an observation. I'm not suggesting you do it. I'm just commenting that, in my experience, these sorts of facilities have been located in a track. Now I don't know what the legal or practical benefit is of that but um you mean the delineation of the actual pipes etc or, or just well just in this particular case 
you know, it, it would be a dashed line drawn around that facility. Yeah, I, say, I, th I think you're thinking of like having an easement for a <coughs> common system. Yeah. yeah. But in this case, because it's a condominium, all the land is is owned in common yeah. right. by yeah. the association. So there's no need for an additional designation right. of the area. I'm not I think I think what you're saying is like comment. like we have a couple of subdivisions that have a fire pond, and the yeah. the whole subdivision owns that fire pond, and yeah. Even yeah. septic systems that have and a shared and they're on right. somebody else's lot and they but have rights. But that's, I mean, we have, right. we yeah. have the location of where, it would, where they're proposing it, yeah. so. Right? Okay. So we're feeling pretty good about the septic and the waste sewage disposal. Uh, solid waste disposal. <clears throat> um, we have the letter. Yep. We have a letter from Midco Solid Waste Facility. Um, we have yet to receive a response confirming our statement. Um, oh, they've reached out. We don't have a, anything yet. No, we, we do. That That's an old... I was going to we say, wrote, we have yeah, a letter. We, yeah. we, we do have a letter now, so... so that's, I, I think, ironically, we attached it to this. <laughs> it is. It's attached to yeah. it. We have had a few versions of this document, so... <laughs> yeah. um, all right, aesthetic, cultural, and natural values. Uh, this is 235.8.8. Proposed subdivision will not have an undo adverse effect on the scenic or natural beauty of the area, aesthetics, historic sites, significant wildlife habitat identified by the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife or the municipality, rare and irreplaceable natural areas, or any public rights for physical or visual access to the shoreline. Um, the applicant's information on this one is that it's uh, hidden from public view and the goal of the developer is to maintain natural, natural aesthetics. <clears throat> um, any discussion on the natural values, cultural, and aesthetic? I mean, as we've discussed, their goal is to remove as little as possible from the, and, you know, I mean, any development is going to have some impact. Yeah, I think um, we should probably at this point just look it over because this goes on. Um, I just read the first state standard. Um, if it's designated as an open space development in conformance with the provisions of the zoning ordinance, the plan shall provide for the conservation of the highest value resources on the site. All subdivisions shall conform to the following. Preservation in, of natural beauty and aesthetics. The plan shall, by notes on the final plan and deed restrictions, limit the clearing of trees to those areas designated on the plan, except as necessary for good forestry practices. Retention of open spaces and natural historic and archaeological features. If any portion of the subdivision is located within an area designated as critical nature by the comprehensive plan, the subdivision plan shall indicate appropriate measures for the preservation of, and the values that qualify the site for such designation. I don't think that's applicable under the no. comp plan, right, Jeremy? There's no designation here. No. <coughs> Excuse me. If any portion of the subdivision is designated site of historic, prehistoric or archaeological importance, and I don't think that's um, impacted either, the goal of the proposed, this is the applicant's response here, the goal of the proposed development minimize impact to the existing natural conditions. A note has been adding to the, added to the plan indicating tree removal will be limited to developed areas identified in the plan except as necessary for good forestry practices and no historic or prehistoric sites known to exist. Anybody on this section? No, what I was just going to say is, I mean, you have some, there's going to be some impact oh, because yeah. it's a development, but all the efforts are to work with the existing site. And yeah. Anybody, Mr. Murray, anything? <clears throat> okay, John? I'm good. Okay. And to you? Fine. Okay. Um, going on to protection of significant wildlife habitat, if any portion. Proposed subdivision lies within areas identified and mapped by the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. Um, the developer shall demonstrate that there shall be minimal impacts on the habitat and species it supports. <clears throat> the plan shall provide for protection of the identified resource in a manner acceptable to the main Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife or in accordance with the recommendations of a wildlife biologist with the demonstrated experience in the wildlife resource being impacted and approved by the board. In the latter situation, the report prepared by the wildlife biologist, biologist shall assess the potential impact of the subdivision on the significant habitat and adjacent areas that are important to the maintenance of the affected species 
and shall describe appropriate mitigation measures to ensure the subdivision will have minimal impacts on the habitat and the species it supports. <clears throat> and these areas include habitat for species appearing on the official state or federal list of endangered or threatened species. I don't think we have anything here for that. Um, no. High and moderate value waterfowl habitats, including nesting and feeding areas, and I don't think we have that. Um, higher moderate value deer wintering areas, and here we have had discussion on this. Um, the IFMW, this is the applicant's response, um, conducted a site visit, <clears throat> except, excuse me, on January 18th to evaluate the map deer wintering area, and there's an attached letter with re their recommendations. Um, I'd like to just take what should go on to say is that we've we've complied with all their recommendations and added their the recommendations to the plans. Yep. <clears throat> right. I mean, we have the areas all are identified and and designated to be preserved for the deer. Mm -hmm. I have a comment on this section, perhaps, and sure. and um, the the letter from Keeley refers to a phase two that he's looked at as well, and um, you had mentioned during our site visit, you kind of pointed up the hill, and so we know that there's a, a phase two out there, and um, perhaps a question for, for Jeremy just to get some comfort level on it, that if there's a phase two, that it'll come in for its own review and be subject to similar uh, yep. comprehensive review as to <clears throat> what the applicants have been enjoyed for phase one. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. If, okay. if, I, if I can comment on that, the, the purpose of that was to make sure he understood potential future development yeah. when he was making his recommendations. So we didn't kind of pick away at pieces of it. So we showed him potential area that we were going to develop just so he understood mm -hmm. and could do a comprehensive recommendation. Sure. And I think that that's a value to the Planning Commission as well. And, you know, so, but I take comfort in the new review process that that would be subjected to as well. Yeah, any any amendment or change to this plan or expansion of this plan goes through the same process. Right. So, right. Yep, and you, you review the same criteria again. Um, one unit or five. Yep. True. Yep. Yep. Um, you have something? Not on the standard. I'm just um, looking at the time, and we'll get through this. Um, but I know that we do have some folks in the audience who may be waiting in expectation of a hearing and I'm wondering if we're going to get to the hearing tonight yeah having been in their position if we get to if it gets to nine o'clock and we don't have a hearing it's kind of annoying unless they want to stay for the whole time right yeah that's I would say we're very likely not going to get to the approvals stage of this tonight um, I mean, we could I just I just wanted to you could take comments and they wouldn't be part of the public hearing record Unless they came back, that might be sufficient to alert the applicants of their concerns. Uh huh. Without a comment here, you could entertain comments. Okay, is that that's a, that's an appropriate use of the of the time now? I think that's a good idea because I do want to allow people to speak, and um, since we're on the issue of habitat, especially, I have a feeling that's largely what we're looking to speak on, if I'm not mistaken. So that's my yeah so um uh gentlemen if you'd like to come up and have a, have a word we're just going to make clear that this is not a part of the official record okay. this is an opportunity to comment and the applicant is hearing it but it's not part of the official record but it, there will be a hearing down the road that you're still invited to come and provide those comments again okay. but it is being heard by the board and by by the applicant it's just an effort to get you out of here instead of keeping you, as Chris said, <laughs> till 9 o'clock and then say sorry next time. I appreciate that. That yeah, was good thinking. Um, Bruce Tolman, 520 Belfast Road. Um, again, um, like I said previously, my folks and uh, family have owned this property since 1953, and we have actually maintained Springbrook Trail from Route 1 all the way to where the brook crosses over the trail, which is just about a mile. And... And I understand. Sort of hugs the property line at once. It, it does, and then there's a section there that we actually own right. trail, which is over 800 feet. 
Um, and I think, Ed, you had said something. I wasn't here for that January meeting, uh -huh. but you said something. You had made some arrangements with um, the state park. Oh, for that a fee. is. Fees yeah, okay. okay. Um, my big concern is, is you're going to have these people coming from these rentals, or if they own them, they're going to be coming up Springbrook Trail. They're not going to know. You cannot tell the difference between Springbrook Trail and our property. It's all one. And, you know, we we hunt and um, we do a lot of target practice and we do a lot of skeet shooting. And we're just not going to, it's going to be kind of hard for us because we're not going to know who's on our property because they may not know. They're not going to know where the line is. And I certainly don't want to post every 50 feet on my property. And then if they follow the trail up to go into the park, like I say, there's over 800 feet. That's actually our property. So that's a big concern for us. I mean, right now we have practically zero people go up through there. Um, and it's just going to be a big change for us in more ways than one. Um, during hunting season, these people are going to wear orange. Uh, they're going to have dogs. They're going to have them off leash because I trap up there. Um, it's just a whole gamut of issues that we would be facing as abutting property owners. And that's one of my big concerns right there. So. Um, do you, do you have any recommendations? You just want to sort of raise the concern and then... You know, I don't know what you can do. People, you know, you could put signs up, but you know how that is. People are going to do what they're going to do. And we've got a nice seven-acre field up there, and they're going to see that right off the trail, and they're going to want to check it out, you know? And uh, it's it's just going to be tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the, that's the big thing. I mean, we're... That's why we're quite concerned with this whole project. You know, um, you know you, you've made a big investment and you want to return on it. I understand that, but it puts a lot on us because it's going to involve people wandering onto our own property, you know. So, but that's, I mean, I could be here for, for an hour talking, but that's, that's the major concern for us. So, yep. but yep. anyway, all right. Well, thank you. Yep, thank you. Yep. Bruce? Yes. Just a question. Um, there's your there's your property, right? Right there. Up at the top. Yeah. yeah. The top. I'm just trying to get everyone to kind of orient yeah, themselves the here, right? Basically that blue line, yeah. It's this curvy blue line. Yeah. Up about no, there. Right. There. Yeah. yeah. All the way at the top. Yeah. 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 And you can see that little. But it doesn't show it all the way. Our property continues way beyond there. Okay. And it goes up. Um, it's boarded on the other side by the state park. And this one doesn't show it, but it's it goes the all the way up. See, it's it continues from there. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 So the trail is the one on the. That little line. dotted red line yeah. that crosses yeah. over, it keeps going. Right. Yeah. Not the dotted red line. The, the, the dash. The, right. the, the dash. Right. Uh, yeah. Dashed. That's yeah. the yeah. Springbrook trail. Way. Dashed on it. Is there any is there any signage or anything coming from the park towards the trail? Um, it's been discontinued. The, the coming down from the park on Springbrook Trail, they got a big sign up saying it's discontinued because, well, it's kind of rough going, and plus then it runs onto our property. Yeah. And so within the last probably four years, I had to post it because we got people coming down through there and coming out of the park. Yeah. Right. And that, that's, what, that's what I'm getting at is sort of as a solution, since you probably have the same issue with people coming from the park, um, and they've got a big sign there, et cetera, saying this is really not a trail to be used. Right. I mean, what, this is not a public access trail anymore, is it, or is it? Well, I, the, the state park has discontinued it. I mean, it's been discontinued for quite a while, and we keep it cleared mainly for three reasons. One, for snowmobiling. Um, for a fire, if you needed to, you could get a Jeep type vehicle or a UTV up there yeah. with people and equipment. And, um, you know, for us for hunting and gathering, getting our firewood. Yep. That's the main reason we've kept it open. You all keep these it open years. as a woods road. Right, exactly. So, in, discuss in discussing with the state park, what exactly are you talking about in terms of trails or? Yes, we're, we're talking with them about allowing our residents to access the park trail network uh, through Springbrook Trail. And, that uh, would be through the neighbor's property? 
Mm -hmm. uh, there's a section that goes through his property, and Bruce and I have discussed this, and he's made it clear that he's not welcome to that, so we would find another way. Yep. So that's what I was going to ask. So, I mean, here's Bruce's line, right? This is the existing trail, right? Yeah. Uh, but this is where the, you know, the hot tub and sauna is mm -hmm. at the end of the road, right? This is the walking path, and we went down here, right? We, we crossed this, we crossed the brook here on our site visit. We walked a little bit up walked, I think, to about here, yep. Yep. right? Yeah. Um, but this road continues mm -hmm. back up to Bruce's, right, to this corner, and then shoots back this way, right? That's you, can go, like. you can go. You can go left or right. You can yeah. go left or right. Yep. Left to the park. So left to the park. So it's not that the applicant's property doesn't abut the park. They abut the park. Yeah. Uh, but Bruce's property There's is There's another property that. that's like up here. The other side of that tennis court size piece is Bruce's property. It goes up to the, to north. the left. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. on the document. Right. I was just trying to. It's so like, this is state park land. Yeah. Yes. yes. So that trail at some point further off the map there crosses the trail in, goes in and out of his the property. The trail on the state right. park land crosses onto his. Okay. Again, right. further up. Yeah, yeah further, further up. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's helpful. Just trying to. It just doesn't show it on this map. map. It doesn't shows yeah. it. That that map right you there got some shows it. Shows it shows it well. our, our property. You go to that one, Jerry. Ninety-one. Park. Yeah. So I, I would just say there's, that we there's his property right here. Okay. And there's the corner, oh. and that trail comes up and it crosses over like this. Yeah. Into that property. So yeah. 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 So here's the property. Here's yeah. the Tolman property. The trail comes up, kind of connects across, and goes back uh, into okay. this, and then up okay. into the state okay. park. Okay. But this is all state park land. Right. So in theory, you guys can create a new trail, right? Going well, far right. away that's, from Bruce's. That's what we would have to do. Park yeah. land, right. and whether or not the state right. wants to add new trails down there, that's what they, they yeah. could do, right? right. Yeah, I'm we, just, we we have no intention to make it a public trail, right? Um, which no, we, I get that. Yeah. Exactly. You would, the thing is, on the other end, what's going to stop people from the state park coming, coming down in. into your place? That's you're yeah. creating a problem both ways. There's nothing to I don't stop think them we're today. We're creating that problem. I yeah, think I mean, this problem just exists. So, well, it's, it's just like I say, you're but you had, people onto my property. You would you would discuss uh, or mention that you were going to have part of the mem uh, ownership be include a membership in the in the park state park. Include the park access Our fee, park pass correct, yeah. as part of it. Yeah. Just, so I, I've, sort of, I've heard for a long time since I came to Camden that the park has struggled with people accessing the park in and out, from, in and out without paying. Yeah, it um, happens even, all the way up. It happens all the way up. So I think that's where I think you guys are trying to at least address that issue with the uh, being property members, owners. Right. Um, right. So I think the one, the one thing that if you invite people onto your land or to pass through it, you're liable for anything that happens on your land. Is that right? So you bear the legal responsibility. I mean, if people trespass, if people mm -hmm. head down the trails, like you say, you can't stop them now. That's that's one thing. If if somebody gets injured, um, then they're trespassing. Mm -hmm. But if you're actually inviting them on a trail, does that then have a legal bearing? You mean, you mean if you have a sign a that says "trail open to the public"? Correct. That's a different thing than we don't intend to do that. Nobody, or, nobody's or, doing that. Like, not but. even to the public, but if you have, you know. If you I, open it up to, I, I can tell you every every couple of weeks I find somebody in my driveway who's heading up that. Oh trail. yeah, so there, sure. there is because uh, they've done it for they've years. They've done it for years, yeah. That's you know I I work with Jerry Isom and I wound up putting no trespassing signs because it's like, what more do you need? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's not your property. Don't go on it. Yeah. But they figured I've been doing it for years. Well, that doesn't make it right. Are right. they are they are they fishing for brook trout or are they actually? Uh, no, the one park? of them was a mushroom hunter, uh -huh. and he just collected mushrooms, but. You know, if it says no Steve trespass. Steve Kixley, the guy's name. What's that? <laughs> Is Steve Kixley, the guy's name. <laughs> and, oh, boy. Remember, you're on the record here. Yeah, it's a record. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> we, we, that's, that's very here. helpful, Bruce, <laughs> to bring this up. Yeah. I think it's very helpful. Yeah, and um, it's, it's important. And, and you know, we're, we're talking about safety, mm -hmm. and we're talking about individual, you know, property rights and things like that. And so... Yep, and so that's something that's going to have to be addressed, and and it sounds like you know Ed is aware of it. Um, you know, it's it's a. Uh, it, it, I don't know if there's any trails. You know, I don't know this area of Camden Hill State Park, but I don't know if there are any trails that abut your land. 
that you can connect to and maybe we'll be, get some more information um, that are south of that trail. Um, but that might be something you're looking into because... Um, it's about a mile from the multi-use trail mm. uh, between That's our closest. Yeah. yeah, that finger that came down was the most significant... You know, and that used but, to be the old extension through the whole property and into the everything. So what I can what I can say is, you know, we've we Bruce and I have talked, and I understand his concerns. Um, and there there are some steps that we can take with signage. With we can make um, all of our residents aware of the limitations of deer hunting season. It's never safe to walk in the woods without without um, being properly prepared yeah. uh, in deer hunting season or any hunting season. Right. So these yeah. these things we will make sure that we let people know we'll ask them not to trespass on his property yeah. um, so we'll do what steps we can if if you're welcome to signage we can put some signage up saying this is the end of of the state park trail and you need to find another way and, and if the state's amenable to it we'll we'll put a circumvent uh, route around his property does that end up going into the um, the condo docks this is not our property. It's the state's property, really. So I don't think it enter, enters into our condo docks. Well, but I mean, the, the limitations. Property, the trail itself, you think? Or the, are you talking about just beyond it, at the state park? Just into, into the state park. When it gets beyond the end of yeah. our property, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's the state's property. But I think Lucia was asking about... Limitations. That yeah. Is there something that you could put in your covenants or the bylaws that highlight the... Don't trespass. Don't trespass properly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and an awareness. Oh. We say a lot of things in those covenants that are pretty, pretty rude. Um, but agreed. Yeah. Um, for future ownership. Yeah. You know, so if the property turns over or. Here, here's. I mean, you know, it comes down to the, in this situation. Um, you know, obviously you've had some discussions, which is great. The communication's happening. Um, you don't want to. You don't want to create a bigger problem with a neighbor, and, you, and you've got a, a, a good gentleman here who's you know got a concern about safety and just the way he uses his land, the way he's always used it, and we want to be respectful and honor those rights. So um, I don't know what the solution is, but it's good to have that information so that we can take that to heart and uh, maybe we can work out something. Um, pretty much, basically, what what it sounds like to me is the applicant is on notice that. You know the portion of the trail that crosses the applicant or the Bruce's Sorry. property is not is not open, right. and and not not safe, um, and so there's going to be the, the anything that's worked around from that is is between you know is is what the applicant can accomplish on their own land with the state, or in further discussions with Bruce, and and you know if there's a, if there's a workaround for that with him then you can address that but I don't think it's going to happen from the planning board perspective yeah. but yeah. it's really good to know well it's one of those things I always try and put myself in someone else's shoes and it's like I can't imagine anyone saying, oh yeah sure that's fine it's like you know this is something completely new we've never had this problem I mean we you know if things go good you could have up to 30 right 30 units if things went well so yeah. that's a lot of traffic mm -hmm. and it's like I don't think anyone could truthfully say hey I'd be up to that yeah sure walk on my property or whatever it's like it's it's a big change. That's yeah. that's yeah. what I'm trying to get across. You run into that problem now, like I mean, you not anymore. About... We we did for a while, uh -huh. but I think in conjunction with the the state putting the discontinued trail and then the few rogue people that we found coming down through, we put up signs and haven't really had much. It's kind of out of the way. Yeah, it really is. And I there's no parking on Route One, yeah, right. so you can't. You know, and that's kind of why they discontinued it. <clears throat> I think way back when. So. And what trail is that? This that it discontinues. It is it one Spring, of the Springbrook Trail. They still call that in the park as well. Yeah. Okay. Yep. They have a sign right at gotcha. the right at the head uh, gotcha. of the of the trail there. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, well, thanks again. Well, yeah. And, and if there's it. anything yep. that comes up or you hear about and you want to come back, you're welcome back. Okay. Will do. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. thanks. Very helpful. Hi, I'm still Chris Nolan, and uh, I'm one of those. When he said there's like zero people, I'm the like zero uh, who have access uh, to his land. But it's not, and these are things that you know Bruce and I have worked out. You know, since I probably lived there since 1997, uh, and I also was an employee of the state park uh, in the 80s as well. Um, there's actually there's actually two uh, former state park trails in the area. Um, again, former. <clears throat> One is Springbrook, 
which you mentioned that goes up to the multi-use trail, and about equidistant from where that intersects, where Springbrook intersects the multi-use trail, Claybrook Trail also intersects the multi-use trail. Claybrook Trail um, heads to Route 1 as well from the multi-use trail, and that one um, goes on the other side of Bruce's property, uh, on, on the north side, and comes down <clears throat> to Route 1. In Bruce is surrounded by former state park trails. <laughs> right, right. In fact, there's a, um, there, there is a sign, I think, by the field that used to be there indicating either Springbrook or Claybrook, um, and it, it would look like you would just walk through Bruce's, what is it, I don't know how many acres that is up there, but 30 acre field? Uh, no, no, no. Seven? Yeah, seven, seven and a half. Yeah. Seven acre field up, and then on the other side of that, you go through the woods a bit, and you intersect with the, uh, the Claybrook Trail. And Claybrook Trail actually uh, goes along the property edge of his, which is the stone wall, uh, all the way down to Route 1. I've recently talked with the um, state park manager, who goes by the name of Sunshine. She used to be out on Warren Island, but now she's over there at uh, um, Park Ranger's house. Um, and of course, you know, Claybrook Road is where I live, so I'm kind of interested in Claybrook Trail too. And I was uh, taking a look at that, seeing, okay, could we, sun, uh, in my conversation with Sunshine, could we reinvigorate Claybrook Trail, and could we also then see what's going on w with Springbrook? And I hope it would be good if she was at the next time this is discussed, speaking about the trail networks, to find out about the research that she's been doing on Springbrook and Claybrook. And one of the, one of the reasons why that she mentioned to me that Springbrook and Claybrook were discontinued was because of uh, property issues that, that they were having down towards Route 1. And also the, the people would complain <clears throat> about not having parking there. And there isn't, there's no parking. Mm -hmm. um, so she had some concerns about what's going on as well with, uh, with, with Springbrook Trail. And yes, I know the sign up at the multi-use trail says discontinued, and it's Springbrook and just the beginning of the emanation of Claybrook is noted on the, uh, the state park maps at the multi-use uh, trail level. But the other thing is, um, yes, I'm here supporting Bruce. Yes, I've enjoyed the use of his property. But also to think about what, what have I done to be able to continue to use his property uh, that other people would have to really consider. Um, it's not just deer season. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the rifle part of deer season that I have to be courteous of. Yes, I walk my dogs there. They're labs. They're good, they're good dogs. They have fun. And they can go off leash as long as I know he's not trapping. I stick to the trail so that the dogs don't vary much off the trail. I might go a few feet into the woods, but, you know, that's it. Within <clears throat> they stay on the trail. Um, I have to stay out weeks ahead of the deer season and turkey season so that I don't impact what's going on with that so I don't negatively impact like the scent and my privilege yeah. to be able to use that. And so those are considerations that he's worked out with me over time. My kids have used it, you know, I've ridden my motorcycle up in, in there. It's allowed because I did it with, with Bruce's permission. Yeah. And also I don't go up there with a the motorcycle when it's muddy, you know, it, yeah. it's just about being considerate. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> in seeing the development, yes, I understand people can buy the land and do what they could and should within reasonableness with the land. And um, sure, if I'd had the money, I would have bought it too, but I don't. Um, it's, it's a beautiful piece, but it just has to be done with consideration. Whatever is done is with consideration of how that's going to affect others. Um, and I, there is... Uh, avenue for a trail that goes along with Springbrook. It's not for the meek, but if you cross the, the, the property and you go up the really steep embankment <clears throat> across the little river inlet, the deer trail is so good there and so used, it's a self-evident trail that ultimately links into 
uh, the top end of Springbrook off of his property. So yeah, that, that's viable. It's currently across the state park. Yeah. Um, but uh, you can follow it anytime. Um, and that would avoid Bruce's property. But there is, you know, there is the safety issue and concern um, that it would just have to be understood. It's not a carte blanche thing and mm -hmm. who that is. Um, but those are the things that I do to, to maintain, you know, my access. And even though I'm not directly abutting, I mean, it's yep. pretty damn close. Yeah. So. Very anyway, good. those are those are my thoughts Thanks, uh, in support of Bruce and the project, and thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, I was just curious about, um, you know, we do have to likely schedule a public hearing on the preliminary stuff. So, yeah. Um, when and you guys found the application complete, um, I just want to make sure we're giving enough information to the applicant. Like what so, parts we need to right. look forward to. So, I mean, we'll just sort of table that discussion. Which the trails? Are you talking about the trails specifically now? No, I'm not talking about trails. I'm right. talking. So I mean, I think you, got, I think you understand their concern. Yes. Um, yeah. The only thing I would like, I mean, you said Sunshine is doing some work, Chris, on on the on the trails. I, I research. Yeah, some, some research. Some research. Going back to the 40s. And 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 is that research about whether or not the the public access should continue, or is it about like the because I know I, I, I spent some time in Barnard, Vermont. I mentioned this before, and they, someone went and did a bunch of research on old right-of-ways and, and roads, and everybody in the town flew out the handle because all these old roads went across their properties, and everybody's going all over the place. Um, and this is a bunch of people who like to have their own privacy and their own you know, autonomy in their own land. So um, similar issue. Is she looking into that particular part of it? or Based on the intent of our discussion, um, I believe it was general interest. Um, it's, she's fairly new to being the, the, the park manager there. Yep. She's heard about things and, and she had all the ledgers there on the wall from the forties and such, of when there were more active discussions, uh, with those to see, is this viable? Is it not viable? She, at this point is just really educating herself. Uh -huh. Um, notwithstanding, you know, this project, it was just because, you know, She's new yeah. and wants to look at it and see what is, is viable and what is not. But in that discussion is when she was saying that, yeah, I heard that you know, these things went out because of the complaints. Yeah. And, um, and it wasn't, Springbrook wasn't fully understood what state park and, and what wasn't. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's why she, I asked her to, to come for the last meeting Mm -hmm. And she wasn't available, but um, I'll certainly make mention uh, just because. I mean, she's such a huge a butter yeah. to this. Um, and yeah, there was the concern about you know price of access is another reason why she was not super motivated about oh let go for it, Chris, and get Claybrook going again mm -hmm. um, because of also the loss of the revenue. Right. I mean, I'm fortunate as a yeah, no, as that's... a disabled veteran that I can get access, but right. uh, and, and have the annual the annual pass. But not everyone does. Yeah. Um, so she doesn't lose re revenue directly from me for accessing through Bruce or Claybrook or whatever. But um, yeah. okay. that is a concern. Okay. Thanks very much. I don't right, know. So Jeremy, you wanted to move on. To well, I just wanted to, um, I mean, we've scheduled, you know, we just need to continue the public hearing, I think, is what we need to do because the piece of this. I think what yeah. you need to do, I mean, I hope we can do it in the next 20 minutes or so, is kind of go through the rest of these approval standards. Um, yes. Am I, 20 minutes not work? I mean, yeah. I, you know, we just went over the fish and wildlife stuff, right? Uh, which gets us to financial capacity. Um, technical capacity, surface waters, outstanding rivers, groundwater, floodplain, freshwater, river streams, brooks, stormwater, and that's pretty much it. Then they have to do the open space. Space. Right. So we can roll through some of this um, and then maybe continue it to a date certain so that um, we don't have to re advertise it and do all that. Um, we'll obviously do public notice like we do on our website and post it in town, but we don't have to do the the um, notice in the paper. I just want the applicant, if there's anything that's jumping out at you guys, you know, and I hope you looked at this a little bit ahead of time, 
If there's anything that is um, jumping out at you from these standards so they can address them. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I embrace that plan. Um, so we really have covered, I think, um, you know, the wildlife habitat. Um, financial and technical capacity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We just have to accept yeah. getting one day more from them. Yeah. A little bit. We go back to 20, right, or so? Andrew, 20 or so to get back to your uh, Yes, stuff. 26. 26? All right. Yeah, so right now we're on two th uh, page, well, I don't have a page number, but uh, 235, 8.9, mm -hmm. uh, financial and technical capacity of the applicant. Um, and we have the applicant is adequate financial resources. Um, site acquisition design costs have been funded by cash equity investments by North Haven. Um, and that's a group of private investors, significant capital committed. Um, construction costs be funded through a combination of equity drawn under the capital commitments made by the investor group and a construction loan from a local regional lender. Um, can I just um, comment on that really yeah. quick, maybe to move you along? I mean, I appreciate all that, but we don't have anything other than that, right? Right. I don't have anything, yeah. That's right. what I was saying. We don't have, we, we just have the good word of. Right. So maybe the applicant can address that in a better way, somehow provide some sort of evidence that you've got the funds to do this, and maybe Garland Dorsey can come up with an estimated cost and mm -hmm. all that so that we can actually get something. Yeah. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, that was the one I was going to okay. ask about because it's rolled into the performance guarantee stuff, anyways, for the right. final. Right. Sure. Yeah. That I could stand to be educated a little bit on the process in this regard. That we'll approve a preliminary plan, and they'll come back at some point with a final Correct. subdivision plan. And in that intervening period of time, is there a requirement for them to have construction estimates? in any sort of a bonding before they're actually out working on the site or yeah. if they're actually at a position where they're selling home sites? Yes, yeah, so um, there is this section and then there is a section about performance guarantees um, that we would address that in. Um, and I think they're hearing this conversation, so um, they'll address that in some fashion. Okay. So what happens is you're Eventually, and we're not going to do it tonight because we're just not going to, um, we're going to continue this meeting because this is a public hearing technically. We'll continue it, um, and at that, at that point, we'll go through, you'll, at the end of that hearing, you'll grant preliminary plan approval, um, and then they'll take it away and then get final stuff okay. done, final plans done, final documents, legal documents, all that stuff for to come back. Um, at that point, hopefully, it should be... You know uh, done, done. how I see it, a kind of a done thing. If you're all comfortable once the preliminary is done, but um, yeah. I think you just keep going. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Well, there'll come a time when the property owner will sign a plat, perhaps, and a town representative guys, signs a plat. You guys all sign the subdivision. Okay. That gets recorded in the registry of deeds with all the deed restrict, okay. all the covenants are in there, the deed restrictions get okay. placed in. And, and prior to us affixing our signatures on that plat, is there a financial guarantee, a performance bond, if you will? There is, a, um, I was reading about it. I haven't done any of these yet, so. Yeah, um, there, there is a performance. Okay. Performance. Um, okay. Yeah. Matching public improvements. Public improvements yeah. Okay. Utilities and the town could get stuck. Right. Okay. This is a whole private venture, so I'm not sure. Yeah, that was, I was going to say, that was how I read that. I don't think in this case there's a requirement for it because the town's not on the okay. hook for anything. Okay. I'm a little surprised that, and, and, that's, I mean, that's how I read it. Well, that is the, did you read Article 10, the performance guarantee section? Yeah, I just wasn't sure that that. All right. I, I'll work with the town town attorney in the next couple of days to get some kind of 
dive into this a little bit, but what we don't want to have happen is the developer to get down a road um, and then all of a sudden he bails or something happens, the, the development is half Started, a road is half built half and built road and running off the running right. the river. I mean, we need to have some sort of protection um, that that they can finish the project um, in some fashion. Thank you. Or if they yeah. can't finish it, we can at least come in and stabilize the work and then be done. Right? I mean, I think that's your concern. Yeah. Does that make sense? I don't anticipate it, you right. guys. <laughs> the radical discussion. Right. But I guess I just, the way I, and I just glanced at it, but the way I read it is, you know, that you could have the same thing with a, a individual property owner could start excavating for a house and run out of money and leave a washout situation too. So it's, I mean, it's. But that, that person couldn't sell 10 right. home sites. Correct. And that parties. project doesn't have a fine, and those projects don't have financial or technical um, requirements either, right? As yeah. part of the approval, we do. Right. That's a, yeah, right. That's good. Okay. Um, all right. Keep Thank it, you, John. Um, good. Good. Good question. Yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, we're looking for more on the financial uh, stuff um, rather than just your good word. Um, and the technical, we've got uh, Gartley and Dorsky and survey, engineering, surveying, and Maple Street Design Studios to assist them with the technical requirements of this project. Does that meet? And Ma Maple Street is the landscape no, architect. The architect. No, the architects. Yeah. Um, so you also have the a landscape. We do. The way, Maple Street is the. Architect for the building. Yeah, yeah, Joe Rosillo. The yeah, he's over here. But now. that's not the. That's not the. He's that's not the. That's not the. Out of the spotlight, right? <laughs> I know. He's not, he's he even took behind the TV. <laughs> that's not the company that's actually constructing the units for no. the prefab piece. No. Okay. Surface water, south standing river segments. Yep. Um. And I would say that we are not in a watershed of a pond or a lake or within 250 feet right. of any wetland, great pond, or river. Mm -hmm. um, we are in the shoreland zone, but that's not what this is asking. It's outstanding river segments. Right. Right. We do have wetlands, though. I don't think. There's wetlands designated on the on yes, the. Yes, there's, there's a few yeah. small wetlands on the front of the I mean, parcel. That's another. That's a few standards down. That's different. Down. Yeah, that's different than. Your standards down. Because we have freshwater wetlands. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Down. All right. This is just rivers. Yep. Groundwater. Yeah, not adversely affect. Um, the groundwater. Stormwater management is really the key there. Well, I think the ground Storm water would, be, and wells. would be curious about if the if you know you're sucking enough so much water out that you're impacting your wells, water wells, or quantity. Wells and and, uh, and septic. You know, are they going to start? Are the neighbors' wells going to dry out because of? And so I think that we'll have that from the pretty significant buffer. Yeah, between the neighbors and there. Um, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, doesn't seem to be an issue, right? Right. Yeah, we're gonna start bottling it. <laughs> start a bottling. This is how rumors plant. start. Careful. <laughs> Floodplains identified on the plans. The floodplain areas are located in close proximity to Spring Brook. No surprise there. Um, no structures closed within that yeah. area. Um, now you've got your wetlands. Yeah, now we're to the wetlands. Um, how much of the wetlands are impacted again? Uh, I lost the number in my head, but it's about 1,500 square feet. We've got them identified on our plans here. Yeah. And you've also got some up by the, and that's by the, is it by the sauna that they're impacted? No, it's only along the front of the property. Right there. Uh, yeah. right there. Uh, oh, right in here. Right in. Yeah. It's just that little corner. And that a state waiver. It does not. Wetland is under. Go ahead. Yeah, it's under, under, under the 4,300 square foot threshold. And the real ones are all. Oh, it's, it's 2,066 square feet is what we're proposing. Okay. And a wetland permit would be required if you're doing over 4,300 square feet. Okay. 
So less and than the vast majority of the wetlands are all in the right. protected areas. So, okay. Springbrook. And then yep. the next one is river, stream, or brook. Yep. Is there a stream on this property? <laughs> I, 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 no one's mentioned that. Just a brook. Just a brook. Yeah. No oh, it's Just a brook. brook. Okay. brook. <laughs> Got to get that. Um, Not a creek. Survey located and identified. Um, all right. It's identified. It, it has been identified, and um, it rushes, and then it pools, right? It dries up, and it still pools. Um, I think we've been over this quite a bit, um, obviously, and the the primary concern that we hear is just the sediment, yeah, um, it, or the, 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 the erosion control, yeah. and that we've been over that ad nauseum. So, um, with that, you know, I think we put the applicant on notice about the importance of that. Um, you know, I I um, I invite. A very thorough plan for the erosion control, and I you know we've seen a pretty good one already. Um, but adding in those components we've already identified about, you know, Carly Dorsky overseeing, you know, that kind of thing. I think um, I think the board will be satisfied at that point. Anybody have anything further on that? And I just appreciate the <clears throat> idea that the proposal includes the open space requirements are focused on the stream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you anything further on the screen right now? Um, there was a suggestion, uh, I think it was Allison who mentioned that the spring is different than the winter when we were there. Any appetite on the board for a, a site visit in the spring? Um, is it going to change any minds or, or cause any concerns? Um, you know, we know the road is soft. We know that the, 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 um, the bank is soft right now uh, everywhere in maine is soft um but i don't know what the what the board's uh perspective on that uh, is chair i don't i don't need to go back out and and in actual look for mushrooms in actual fact you know when we were there the stream the brook was running pretty good too so we saw it in full flow and yeah i mean yeah i think we'd only be trying to imagine what would be happening we've we've seen it mm -hmm. so i don't think we need to anything back. No, I guess only again regarding construction, um, what time of year the construction of this particular section of road would be happening? Is there any concern about it happening in the soft period, so to speak, um, versus another time of year? I don't know if, if that's... Well, we don't really have a... I mean, we, what, we can, what we've asked for is sort of controls all of that and... I mean, yeah. not, is, no, is one, it, no one wants to go out there in March when everything's going to get stuck. And, right. I mean, they're not going to have, March is over, so they're not going to have approval in March. Yeah. Um, well, this but, year. But, but they are, but they are I, I mean, I expect that you, you hope to have this done by the end of the year, right? Especially the road construction. That's a good um, yeah. the, uh, is, there, is there a sense in which, you know, if everything goes according to plan on the approval side, um, is there a way to put this part of the road towards the drier season? I mean, it, it's certainly always a balancing act when you're trying yeah. to stage construction. The, the more important component of this is that it is done early rather than later so that the vegetation can reestablish before winter. That's the critical path here, you know? So mm -hmm. we're confident the soils can be stabilized. You can work on them when they're soft. The contractor's not gonna be digging through there when you're sinking you know, in a foot yeah, mud, you know? Right. So once the soils dry out, that's when you wanna target it so you can get in. Cause we have like a very short growing season and yeah. the earlier we get that in place, but everything lo stabilized. Lo logically, the key st sections that we're talking about are gonna be later in the right, road work right. anyway, cause you've gotta put the road in. You to have to get, get to the there. first. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But you don't start at the end and work your way up. I mean, <laughs> that would really cause some. <laughs> Just going to drive the bulldozer all the way through and then, yeah. yeah. So, okay, yeah, I think we're really, again, focused on the erosion there, and, and that's been, been hammered. Yeah. Um, so with that, with that, I'm sure we'll, when we get to public comment, yeah. again, we'll, we'll have more on that. Um, Likewise, Storm. And uh, stormwater, we're still, we've been over this. We've had a good back and forth with our experts. Some minor details need to be hammered out, but really we're moving towards... Uh, a secondary set of eyes approving the stormwater plan. 
Mm -hmm. That's where we're at. at on that one. Um, and we talked about um, having Gartley and Dorsky oversee and uh, doing inspections um, yeah. and um, a stormwater maintenance agreement that will be, um, yeah, shown on the actual subdivision plan that gets recorded so that the town can enforce um, the maintenance stuff um, right. should that become a problem down the road. In the sectioning. Yeah, I think, and I think they get that the construction construction plan. Are you, are you looking for that to be on the actual subdivision plan? I it's am. really a different item. That's the problem. Um, we can put it as like an attachment. You know, a subdivision is traditionally stamped by a surveyor. Yeah. And the engineer is going to stamp the the stormwater and the maintenance agreement. So we can put it on another plan, and we can put it in any format you want. But I think some note on the. On the on the subdivision plan that gets recorded, that references a certain document that we will that that um, yeah. the board okay. will approve. Okay. okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that sounds good. Maybe we'll work. We'll send some suggestions over, and you can let us know what you think, or vice versa. And yeah. We'll come up with I something. Mean, I think important, to, and I mentioned it earlier, is uh, you know the maintenance um, doing recertifications, and I know Garland and Dorsky know this about stormwater stuff. They often there's a requirement on stormwater to get do recertification with the DEP. It doesn't happen. Um, and I'm not saying the applicant, when they need to do it, they're not going to do it. But just historically, projects in the state of Maine don't get those things recertified. I don't want that to happen here in Camden. So on a project like this that has stormwater infrastructure, I know there's not a lot of stormwater infrastructure here, but I think it's important to include a requirement that they provide some sort of five-year certification to the town that, yep, the HOA, whoever's retained someone to do a recertification they looked at the stormwater everything continues to be good if it's not good the de engineer likely Gartley and Dorsky would come out and do that certification because um, they're the ones doing this they'd come out and make recommendations on how to address any issues that have come up over time and that's that's critical to make sure water quality is um, dealt with right. and it's a priority and it, it's addressed so yeah I appreciate that Jeremy I do and, and applicant okay with that criteria I would just say if you're going to require us to use Gartley and Dorsky, we agree to keep <laughs> No, we will never prices. require you to use anybody. You're free to choose. I was gonna, I was gonna say we their prices. Yeah, no, we can we can come up with a pretty good routine and a lot of times they can self monitor these things yeah. and provide right. a checklist and photos and it's only when something isn't working or isn't right and the town will know because you can require the association to provide you with that documentation. So we right. can provide the outline and the yeah. spec. We don't necessarily need to be involved all the time. Right. But I no. think Jeremy Jeremy is looking for uh, something that indicates that we actually will have that, that the a five year a five year by the right. not necessarily you, right? But right. somebody who's well, qualified will come well, out. I think and, the and HOA it. needs to be inspecting and monitoring and maintaining all the time. Right. Right. And that the annual annually submit something maybe to the town, but every five years I think you need to get a qualified somebody to come in and look at the site. Uh, because, again, an HOA, I mean, we're dealing with this up at um, Lupin Terrace. We're dealing with it up at Pleasant, Pleasant Ridge. Andrew knows this. Um, HOA, homeowners don't know anything about, sub, about stormwater, really, how to maintain that infrastructure. So it's critically important to, I think, have a professional look at it from time to time. No, I, I think annual, the HOA needs to maybe provide something to the town, but every five years or something, someone brings in a qualified stormwater inspector. Right, so what would the HOA provide annually? They would provide, like what Will's saying, a checklist. And I mean, I've done it in Bangor. We had stormwater program where HOAs would submit annually the checklist. They'd take photos and say everything looks good. And that, that suffices. It's that every five year one that we get from the engineers that say, oh, okay, everything does look good. And yes, those, know dra those drain pipes haven't failed under the right. road bed right. and, sure. and those kind of things. Of that, that maintenance agreement. I'd like to see it as part of it. Yeah, yeah we've we've actually included that type of language in our, our stormwater narrative. So we'll I, I talked sure to clear. Yeah. I talked to Chris, Chris about it a little bit. Yeah, um, but yeah, we have one, and we have the, the maintenance agreement <coughs> language from the ordinance, and we'll make sure all that's uh, ready to go and clear, and, and we'll try to get something over sooner rather than later. Yeah, so and by no means am I 
you know, no, I, making an the, assumption that they're not going to do it right, right, right and it's not going to be dealt with. It's just over time, this is an ongoing problem. And this is something that we're going to be the, taking your, your input on this. We're going to be looking to do on all the projects we see. Um, yeah. Asking for that kind of review because yeah. water quality is a primary but it, issue. Here. But especially this one where there is such a key. Yeah, the brook and the habitat and everything. Of yeah. So you're not being singled out, but you are being the canary, in the, the canary in the coal mine, so to speak. Um, spaghetti lots. Spaghetti lots. Spaghetti lots. No spaghetti lots. There aren't right? any. Spaghetti. Spaghetti sounds good. No spaghetti lots. No spaghetti lots. No, no lake no phosphorus. No no impacts on adjoining municipality and no, yeah, no liquidation harvesting. We are trying here. Uh, okay. That's it. Yeah. Pretty much it. Um, do you want to touch on the open space piece while you're here, or do you want to continue that? I mean, I think it's important um, just to get acknowledge what they're, what, how they're laying out the open space. Well, almost yeah. there, yeah. yeah. That would be critical to kind of go through. I think that. we could get Very through important. it. Okay. Yeah. I think we can. A lot, and I think, yeah, as, as Jeremy says, I think it's a key. Which page are we on now? Well, Andrew B2. I'm just putting it up on the screen for other. Yeah. For nine one nine two nine three. Yeah. 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 I mean, really, we're down to the bottom of that first yeah. page of. Yeah. I did review this with, number again of, with Will and um, Andrew. Yeah. So we're within the coastal residential stuff. district. <clears throat> The applicant indicates the parcel is served by an on-site wastewater disposal system and is allowed um, one unit per 60,000 square feet. Total parcel area is <laughs> 1, 1,887, so... We kept it in square footage. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Uh, therefore, the total number of units allowed on the parcel is 31, um, at, to your question, Lucia, earlier. And so the, there are a total of 10 units proposed right now. <clears throat> and, um, you know, the... The board is certainly aware that this can be expanded, but it goes through as John requested, like the same exact proposal. You know, uh, well, and just process. to click uh, on the next point, um, the applicant's response is no new lots are proposed. Meaning, sure. you're not going to. There may be new sta subsequent stages of development yeah. with houses added, but no new subdividing of lots mm -hmm. is what you're clarifying there right yeah yeah it was right. pretty much to address the because that ordinance item says each lot right uh, yeah and i'm just trying to sort of yeah yeah clarify that the same no new lots proposed in this application right right, right. okay so we've got um basically they're they're preserving open space 33 percent of the parcel what we learned from our site walk and from keel's evaluation is that they're preserving a lot of the land closer to the park right and and also along the brook um and uh but what is generally designated as the deer wintering areas um the the, the more significant deer wintering well, areas yeah and the the nature of the development the clumping the cluster development, clustering yeah. of preserves more open space than a traditional Subdivision, which facilitates that as well. Which is anybody else have anything on this one? Um, I do think that it meets the both the letter and the spirit of the of the requirement, yeah. um, and uh, commend the the applicant for that. Um, the road coming through, we've seen that they're going to be cutting a new road. Um, getting rid of the old one. Getting rid of the old, and. Um, everything has been yeah, that's all. done up to snuff on that. And then got the setbacks. That's pretty clear. And all building is just standalone single family units. Mm -hmm. And then we have the, the common ownership detailed in the, in yeah. detail, detailed in detail. A fire pit and a sauna. That's right. Um, so I think we're there. Yeah, I don't. I don't see anything on the open space. Is there anybody on the board have any questions about any of this? Nope. I mean, no. We're going to have an opportunity, of course, to go through this. But this is an opportunity to give the applicant any warning of any issues you may have uh, going forward. Um, all right. Eight o'clock. 
Yeah, I think this is you the want to um, continue to and want to continue this to a date certain, and I want to give the applicant make sure the applicant can chime in on this. Yeah, yeah. because what we don't want to have is um, you know schedule something and then they're rushing to get right things done and becomes an issue. And I mean, I want to give them plenty of time, but also cognizant of the developer's desire to get something done. Proceed. Yeah, but they're talking about yeah. continuing preliminary, not going to final. Yeah. Can, are, can you clarify, so we're going to continue the preliminary and you're not going to review the preliminary for completeness? We did the completeness. We've, we've, we've done the completeness. We're not going to do the approval. Right. Until after the hearing? Right. That's correct. That's what we're proposing. I mean, yeah. I mean, it says, by, by, by the ordinance, it says, right, it says, and I'm just going to go back to it. The board shall hold a public hearing within 30 days of determining that it has received a complete application. Right? So we've determined we've received a complete application. Yeah, I think it's been a little bit disjointed and confusing, but I, I, the ordinance that's, itself that's, is disjointed right. and confused. Right, and that, but that's my understanding is that we needed to get a completeness thing done. We had, we had a public hearing on the waiver, but we needed a completeness thing done, and now we've, we need to, we've, we've found it complete. And you've also We would still have to actually hold the public hearing and then the preliminary plan review. That you don't need more information, that you have enough information to go forward. So you've reviewed that. So essentially, you're at the right. end of this, except for public the public hearing. But this was a public hearing. The purpose of the preliminary well, that plan was only for the waiver. The, the comment we took was sort of outside of a public hearing. So it is confusing. For preliminary determination that the proposed subdivision will meet the approval standards. Right. And I think that's what you're doing. That's what you've done, determination. Right. And I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't draft this ordinance. I have um, a question, Jeannie, though. But it does say, <laughs> it does say the board shall hold a public that's hearing within 30 days of determining that it has received a complete application. This is in the preliminary approval piece. Mm -hmm. um, but let me ask that we yes. had a public hearing. We, that we did have comments from the public on the waiver. And then you opened up to comments on the project overall. Right, but I specifically stated that the comments were not part of the public hearing, that we were going to have them as an option. Why not? Why wouldn't they be part of the public hearing? There has to be a separate public hearing. There has to be a separate public hearing on, on the... The public hearing we had was for the waiver alone, and then we weren't going to get to the public hearing portion. See, we're about to table right now and, and say we're going to have a public hearing. We gave the gentleman an opportunity to speak instead of keeping him here and not getting to the public hearing just so that you could hear their concerns and we as the board would be alerted to them, they will have the opportunity to come back and repeat those at an actual public hearing, or public comment. I should, I should clarify those terms. Public hearing, it's all been public hearing. Public comment period is what I'm really trying to say. We did not have a public comment period on this part of the application. That's where we're at and that's where we're tabling. What, I mean, it, and I'm just going to read from the ordinance because, I mean, this is, it's, it's bonkers and I am certainly going to try to work with Shenley and whoever else in the board to try to fix this because, you know, um, it, it talks about, and we're in the specifically, and this is an article, article, article six, major subdivision preliminary plan review, right? Talks about your purpose, talks about the submission, preliminary plan review, right? Um, and then it talks about a public hearing, and then it talks about preliminary plan determination. And then it says, within 30 days of the public hearing or within 60 days of determining application complete has been received, or within another time limit as may be otherwise mutually agreed, the board shall approve, approve with conditions, or deny the preliminary plan application. So... Spend a lot of time in preliminary. You do. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it talks about, there's lots of public hearings here. So, um, I mean, it seems to me that within 30 days of the public hearing or within 60 days determining application complete um, you've got to approve approve with conditions the preliminary plan so rolling those 30 within 30 days of the public hearing within 60 days of determining determining it seems like we could in theory schedule a public hearing and still be within the 30 days of the public hearing and 60 days of determining it complete because we just determined it complete, right? Mm -hmm. So we can hold a public hearing at that public hearing 
if you guys find, find that they um, approve with any conditions um, the preliminary plan um, application. I didn't, again, I didn't make this so ordinance up, but it is. The, the next steps, what we still could, we could do a public hearing on the preliminary plan tonight. Mm -hmm. And then the preliminary plan, then we still have a public hearing on the final plan. You can, yes. Yep. If the board decides to hold it on the final plan, that's what it says. It right now. You have a choice not to have a public hearing on the final plan. You don't have a choice to not have a public hearing on, on the, the preliminary. preliminary plan. Yeah, I, I, the question is, do we do that tonight, or do we? Well, I feel like we kind of to... cut that short, and people right. have left, and and I so, so I think that ship has sailed, unfortunately. Right. Um, it's not we, down. Well, yeah, yeah, it takes a, a, a month, right? Because the next, our next meeting. If, if we had the public hearing tonight, our next meeting in theory would be final submission. Which could be another public hearing. But I mean, the, I mean, to be fair, the items that were discussed openly weren't related to the project during those comments. The people that were waiting for public comments, they were not related to our project, unrelated. They're, it's critical information, but they're unrelated. Yeah, but Alice McKellar left and didn't comment after the waiver. She left after the waiver. And said that, did you say at that I point that it wasn't don't know that she had. Camera? I don't know that she had further comment to make on that. I did hear she had to leave. But. You know, I mean, I'm just, I'm just pointing out one person. Um, okay. But, yeah, but I, I, I think. It doesn't mean that you can't submit and go from the public hearing. Straight to the final review. To the, to the same meeting? In the same meeting. See, Jeannie, Jeannie's your expert yeah. on this stuff. Yeah, so. if, if that's the process, then I don't think I, it's, really I think it's a little weird, that. and I think Jeremy's <laughs> right that the statute isn't great. But I think, I don't, I don't envision us trying to have two more, like, extended public hearings. Like, you know what I'm saying? So this was really to make sure you guys had everything to get the final ready. Right. And we found it complete. We've had some public comment that we, you know, some off, the, right. you know. So if we continue the... I guess, yeah, some of it's on timing, right? It depends on when you continue. Well, that's what we're trying to do. That's, 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 I think, approval. where we were of figuring out what the that <coughs> date would be. That do if we can. Be in for that May, what if we continue yeah. the public hearing, public hearing May, they have their final. May 5th, right? So we advertised this as a preliminary. <coughs> we advertised a hearing for today or for the last time or for preliminary. So we don't need to do meet all the requirements for notice. Right, that are in the in the ordinance. So we could, in theory, just continue this public hearing for to two weeks. Right, that's what I was trying to say, and then that would give the applicant the time to address all the various things that we've talked about, and come back and have public hearing, and potentially even do public hearing on preliminary and do a, a final we, determination. We won't be prepared to do final in two weeks. That's nope. okay. But in two weeks, we can we can grant you preliminary plan approval in two weeks. Perfect. Okay. That'll work. What is yeah. the date? In two weeks? Exactly. Right. Then we'll know, and it then won't, we'll come we back can and just go right back. And then we wait yeah. for final. <clears throat> when I say two weeks, that would be April twelfth. We could do April thirteenth, which 13th is the, the normal Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. I'm out of time. Mm -hmm. We're back yeah. to those dates. Yeah. I think you're almost there. Yeah. Yeah. Today is the 29th. Two weeks would be. It's just going to be a public hearing. Give the comments and we're done. Just saying two weeks. Listen. I'm saying two weeks because Andrew may have to get some stuff together. I mean, if we want to do it on the 6th, we could try to roll that. That's fine. We're not going to have time to prepare Understood. anything that we commented on tonight. I think right. we'll try to wrap those into final. So you can schedule whichever you'd like to. We'll make but, it work. But can we? Is there a time when we think we would have everything ready for the final? We could do both together. We so could, but it would, would be, be beneficial to just try to move through. I, I think, think to make sure we have get preliminary approval. on April sixth. Continue this to April sixth, which is next Thursday. Preliminary plan approval. Could we do the fifth? I can do the fifth. I can't do the sixth. Not that that matters. But. Oh, okay. well, it matters. We need a quorum. Okay. This is better for me. A, a, a conflict. No, Did we lose Mark? Thursday. No, Mark's still there. Give us. I mean, we yeah. go ahead. No, I was just going to say we're flexible. We can, you know, we'll make we'll cover whichever time needs to happen. Um, and yeah, I think we're there. We're ready to. to make. So I'm going with uh, Jeannie. So your your take is um, even if we go to like the 13th, there's no delay for the applicant. No, because 
because it's going to be May before they have their final anyway. So that's correct. You can wait mm -hmm. until the twenty. Correct. Right yeah. Meeting. We're we're gonna try. Well, we're gonna try to submit for final. We have to submit for final on the eighteenth of April. So okay. right. The earlier, the better, to make sure there's nothing that jumps out in there. Right. That's why I'm thinking the fifth or sixth. So that's just a public hearing to hear public comment, right? There's no other. This is a public hearing, and then the they will approve the preliminary plan. Yeah, so there'll, there'll be there'll be. We would provide no other additional information. There'll be a public comment period. You might want to be involved in, obviously. Questions, right. Right. responses, right. any last. And then minute. we would go through the final determination on the preliminary, right. and that would give you that right. approval. They don't want August 6th. They won't be ready. <laughs> oh. No, they're ready for April 5th. April 5th, April 5th for the hearing is April 5th or 6th for the hearing is good for you guys. Yeah, this works. Yeah. Does yeah. that work for you, Lucia? I can do the 5th. I can't no. do the 6th. I can do the 6th. April 5th. I can do the cover. We're going to shoot for April 5th. So we're five. making a mo uh, motion to continue the hearing to April 5th. That's a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. At 5 o'clock in the Yep, at, at 5, 5 p.m. We have a motion and a second to continue the public hearing on the preliminary application and approval until April 5 at 5 p.m. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mark? You guys vote? <laughs> Mark is gone. Aye. There okay. we go. <laughs> Um, yep. So, so moved. We will continue the public hearing on the pre up on the uh, preliminary submission uh, to April 5th at 5 p.m. And some member of the public had better show up. <laughs> or, or it will be really quick. You got Chris here still? Chris will be here. He's going to bring su sunshine with him. I do too. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Yep. And your patience too, because this has been a little bit, you know, yeah. scattered it is today. A, I mean, the, the process. Yeah, I'm just getting. I'm just trying to get to the back. But if you can print out some more maps next time. Print a fresh plan set for uh, April. I, I want mine in triplicate and laminated. <laughs> These are actually. Can you make them bigger? We need a motion to. Oh, we already continued. No, so, so no adjournment necessary. Oh, he gads, man.